The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that, yes, Olski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways, why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is. But still, regardless, your your your, contrib- your contributions, your shillings, your, your, your bits of change can help us to grow here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So once again, patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show ladies and gentlemen this is the one and only brian idol and you're listening to turnbuckle tabloid Turnbuckle tabloid. with three assholes (laughs) I want I want to cry right now. I really do. I swear I have it's a big deal, man. I have I have tears ready to fall out of these tear ducts as well as it should i'm emotional too this is a big deal yo seriously my hairs are standing for this shit this is crazy the dj over there look at you this is <laughs> the t- crazy the, the, the this, t- is, this is gonna make our lives so much easier doing this fucking show you know? i don't think i don't think we have to worry about most of the things we were worrying about worry. last week or i have to even sweat anymore uh, i didn't hit no more no more <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, no more no more uh, let me not jinx it because it'll probably fucking it probably happen. will happen but uh Wow. Um, Do you hear the clarity? No, I, no, I can hear it. I hear it loud. I hear it very clear. It is It is crisp. <laughs> I cannot wait to, to listen back when the episode comes out on, on Spotify and, you know, all the blah, 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 ski, the spe- spiel we'll give you later. But Look at this. I'm, I'm raising up the, the, the headphone volumes. Look at, look at the on-air shit. It's blink flashing on because it's like it, we're recording. <laughs> the lights are all Christmassy. Like, it's... My balls. Yeah, my ball. Oh, my my, my ball hands are standing. <laughs> like this is. Look at the uh, look at the, the colors. colors are just like. Uh, In case you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's not porn. It's not. It's not. It should be though, but it's not. Porn. Finally, we invested in ourselves again. <laughs> let me let me phrase it. We've we've always invested in ourselves, but this time we went out and jumped out the window and said, "Fuck it, we had to do something major." We did something that a while ago I w- was brought to Red's attention. He looked at me and was like, "This shit is way too much money. We can't think." It was not. It wasn't like I don't know if it was a thought in your mind from the yeah, beginning, yeah, yeah, but it, it, was. It, was, it was like it was, a, it was it was it was a it was a it was a it was a what's the word? It was a stretch. It I was a stretch. It was a stretch. But um, I think it's I think it's it's great to confirm now that uh, that stretch became a reality, my friend. So uh, when we we we. We recorded a uh, partial episode with the boss Rich. He um he he showed us and talked to us about some new equipment, and you know he talked he spoke about investing in us and all yep. that stuff. And, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." And, and saw the fucking Rodecaster Pro yeah. mixer. I'm actually tearing up just hearing your you speak. And I'm like. I fucking need that. We yep. need this for the fucking He told me show. on the way back. He was like, yeah, we're getting that. We got to mm. get that. We have to get it. After hearing it on the show, yeah. it was How like, crisp did it sound? It oh, my God. I was like, shit, you got to be fucking kidding me. Yep. 
So yep. I said, by hook or by crook, we're getting this shit. One way or another, we'll have that in our possession before Christmas. You said, like, before Christmas. We Fucking were, Christmas uh, came early, sir. Yeah, sept- September. <laughs> I, you know, I'm about to run to the fucking refrigerator and get another fucking beer because I, I got to celebrate this shit. Yeah, you do. You do. So it took it took a minute to, to finally say, yo, how, how, how am I going to be able to do this? How can we put this together? You know, you had your fucking hiccups. Like, while I go get a beer, tell people what happened to you this past week with your fucking car. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, me and Red were talking uh, about – the payment situation when it comes to the to the mixer and all that. Well, like, well, how much we would have to invest? And all of a sudden, on the way home from a beautiful dinner at Fernasia uh, Sushi Place, my car broke down. <laughs> my car broke down, and uh, six hundred dollars later, uh, it's fixed. But the whole cat converter fell off, and I was stuck in a gas station for about two hours waiting oh, it was for only six. It was six hundred. Yeah, I had a because I had a conversation. I was about to say I think you were overcharged. Six hundred is too much, you think? I think so. My, uh, my, my um, which I asked my dad about it because my friend, I was I was playing the new Call of Duty Alpha. And my friend said I got scammed as well. Yeah, I think you got overcharged for it because I I, I was telling my boy Joey about it. Jojo was like, "Yeah, he could have got that done no more than three fifty. Yeah, that's what that is. That is the truth. He said unless they were doing other stuff on it. I need to look back at the paper. Yeah, and I, is I'm, this I'm, a I'm, family I'm, friend? This is the family group that we usually go to. This is like this is like the mechanic that we've always gone to yeah, for everything. Yeah, 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 and he usually right. does other shit for free. Because remember, you had told me initially it was eight hundred. It was originally eight, but then he dropped it down to six. But yeah, but the you... thing is, the thing is, he always blessed us in other avenues, like for inspections. He would always do it like little side shit for free. Like he would usually help us out. So I don't know why he would scam us here. Yeah. Supposedly he bought a brand new part. Like he had to get it delivered day on the on the same day. Yeah. Even so, it's not supposed to be that much. I'm gonna ask. I don't uh, even know cars like yeah, that. Yeah. No. I'm, I just, I'm, I just I'm, know I'm, I'm gonna look at the paper when I go home. Again, because I was literally I was playing the new Call of Duty, and uh, my friend was like, "You got scammed." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "You paid way too much." Yeah. So I looked that up. Uh, I actually just I actually just t- took two hundred out today, and paid some of it towards it. Oh, I he took, gave you he gave you like a whole payment plan. Yeah. So I took two hundred out after I went to go buy the Mario game, and uh, yeah, if he if he, if he if he's if he's like a family friend, no, not even that, or just your your. Your he's regular the, he's, he's, he's your been mechanic? doing my dad's car since like oh five. Yeah, if he's a regular mechanic, he should be looking out for you in some way or another. But that, that's kind of bad. But any yeah, case, I'll double check it up. I knew I knew you was going through that, but I said, you know what? Fuck, we need this thing. It's 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 yeah. it's literally a fucking game changer. It's it's literally. I think it, it's literally. It it changes the entire atmosphere of the show. Yeah, it, it changes everything. Everything for me. It's I got, a big deal. I, I, you know, we got the ambiance of New York in the background. I want to hear if, if it catches. Yeah, yeah. It probably would, but still. Hey, fuck it though. Fuck really. it. It's part of the same, but it's probably not as bad. As, no. As so it does it come with the noise thing? What's it called? The noise sink? Well, oh. it does have it. Had a, it does have a noise gauge. It has the a noise, noise compression as yep. well. And uh, but I also saw that once I um, was doing research and doing reviews and the instructions and all that, I started realizing why certain things were happening with the show. Yeah. So I was I, I go oh okay so I I I, I was like. I, this is what you do with the process of podcasts. Listen, you learn. We're a hundred and fucking eighty-four. We're, we're, we're literally on the road to two hundred in my right. eyes. So in my eyes, every we week we're fucking changing and we're learning and all this shit. Yep. But with this mother, I literally, I wanted to have sex with this thing. I know, <laughs> I know. You talk. I, wanted to have, I called you with that the day. The bells and whistles. It sounded I wanted like to have you were hard. It sounded like you were like you were erect. <laughs> it sounded like you were erect on the train on the way home. I was like, shit, bye. I, I didn't. I didn't really want to like. I didn't want. To just be this thing that's like, all right, yeah. now I got it, then what? No. No, once it's I not started, then what. It's PC, now what. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. That is now what. It's now what are we, now what's next? I'm looking the... at the audio levels and all this shit as we record it. I'm going, yeah. oh my God, I don't have to worry about nope. pitch. No. Nope. That's this fucking crazy. No. Nope. And I don't, and this is, I think this is the first time I hear a clear, I, I don't hear, I don't hear any blips, nothing. This Listen, is like straight smooth sailing, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna bite you in the ass. Pocket wise to get one of these things, but if you're legit, straight up, and you believe in serious, yourself, and you believe in what you're doing as a podcaster, the Roadcaster Pro is the shit. It's a, it's official tissue. Which, no, which, which, which no by, games. Which, by the way, you know. Um, which, by the way, I, I could do this right now. I have a clap to help it. It, just, it sounds great. And it was just by a quick button press. It was. You literally it, pressed one button and it did it. Um, you know, of course, we're going to give a quick shout-out to Rich for showing us the thing. But I also want you to give your story on um, the, the thing that really put you over the, the edge about buying this, which, which was um, Sean Oliver's uh, business 
um, audio book. You said there was a part of that book that made you realize, you know what? You're fucking, he's fucking right. You got to invest in yourself. You got to invest in yourself and everything is about putting your brand out there. Even if you're, you're, you're doing it as something, as a passion project. Yep. It's, you're going to look at one or two things when you do it. You're going to look at it as a, a thing that you do for the love of it or this is going to be your legit goal for a career. Yeah. You got to invest in yourself. The blood, the blood is, that's what he calls it. The blood is what you need to put forth in it. The blood could hurt you because if you don't really understand the outside reasons of why you have to learn how to deter yourself, the blood drives you to do a lot of stupid shit as well. Yeah. Like we've done stupid fucking bits. Yeah, or we have. Had done stupid interviews with people. <laughs> we had a few of those. We had some hiccups here and there. Yeah, but as, as the always. blood will drive you to continue to work on your podcast, yeah. your your artwork, your your love for anything you do. For pops. The blood will yep. keep you going. Yep. So absolutely. you need if you if it's in you and if you want to continue push it forward, you need to start looking at avenues to 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 invest to get the branding when it comes to graphics, when it comes to taglines, when it comes, you know, and, and I said, even stuff that I was dead set against. Yeah. I said, fuck it. We got to do it, bro. We have which to. Which was Patreon. We, like yeah, a Patreon yeah, show, which yeah, by the way, yeah. if you guys didn't hear in the opening, uh, the opening tagline of the show and in the intro, yes, we have a, pa- a Patreon. We'll we get do. To that we set. do have a Patreon. But before we get into that, before I have sex with this fucking um, mixer, bro, welcome everybody to another episode of. Turnbuckle Tabloid. I am your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the King of Talk Style, and as always, the Cheap Thrill, Jay the Red Santa. And I am the Mook with a Mic and the Funko Hub, Matthew Wolski. You already fucking plugging? I have, well, I guess I gotta add to my tagline of names. Is really, this is what we're really doing now? I have to. I'm about to be almost a thousand. I'm not mad at you about that. We'll, we'll get into that in a sec. But, thank you. Um, thank you. Make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets. Honestly, that, this, that, that shit that you got going on. It's gonna be fucking crazy. Which one? The the Funko Hope shit. Oh, yeah, I'm we'll, hoping we'll get into that. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 we'll, 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 I, I would like to do that in a separate, sure, s- like you know, event or <laughs> segment or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, whatever. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about it because yeah, we got sure. a lot to talk about. And open the salvo. Make sure you check sure. us out on all social media. Let's check us out on our like group page on Facebook. Numbers are growing on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, on the group and the like pages. So please, please share, share, and like. Let everybody know. That we're in the building, we're here turning it down, and we're doing wrestling shit. We like wrestling shit. shit. Also, make sure you check us out on Instagram at the Turbuckle Tabloid Podcast. At Turbuckle Tabloid Podcast. Most stuff is going on there as well. well I'm trying to throw more shit out there, man. We're doing, yep. we're doing more fun stuff over there. Yep. Also, make sure you check us out on Twitter at Turbuckle Tab. And be sure you check us out on the YouTube and the anchor pages at Turbuckle Tabloid. The YouTube pages. Definitely throwing more stuff, yeah, more I content, see. and I really don't give a fuck about YouTube. I but more content, care. the better. Fuck but it. exactly, it's more content, the better. Speaking of more content, make sure you check us out on all the podcasting outlets: Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, uh, po- uh, Google Podcasts. And now we have just touched base, and we are now a part of Amazon Music as well, guys. Big, another big avenue. We're all over the fucking place, so I don't want to hear shit. Shit from you guys. No excuses, talking about you can't find us. No, we're fucking touching base with having invest. We're investing in ourselves here. Yeah. In Turbo Tabloid. I always tell people I might show up late at the party, but when I get there, I'm fucking turning up. So you already know. Hell yeah. So make sure that you you, you recognize Turbo Tabloid the same way. We get there, we're gonna fucking turn shit up. So get us all at all those outlets. And if you can't get us there, make sure you check us out at RageWorksNetwork.com. RageWorksNetwork.com is where you get all the podcasts. That is associated with Rage Wars family. You get Black is the New Black. Call me when it's over. You get um, a Toys and Text. Rich has been doing a lot of good stuff on, on that side when it comes to the um, the toys aspect. Yeah. So a lot of uh, a, a lot of new and exclusive um, uh, wrestling and other uh, um, exclusive collectibles that's gonna that's coming out that way. So check out RageWorksNetwork.com. and of course you get Turnbuckle Tabloid there as well. So they're, they're doing. I, I I follow the um. The analytics of what how the show's going on. Yeah. If you can't get us on RageWorks Network, if you if you or you you find RageWorks because we're we're on two. If you guys don't get it, we're on two different 
uh, 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 we're under two different umbrellas. You could get us separately at Turnbuckle Tabloid, yep. or you could get us under RageWorks as well. So our shows are under the RageWorksNetwork.com. Yes. So if you if you if you follow RageWorks, the shows will be there as well. Yeah. And those numbers combining, it's getting crazy. It's, Absolutely, it's, it's ridiculous. Every week we're growing, and we don't just say that as some bullshit to put ourselves no, over. No, it's no, the no. numbers. I, I the numbers are in the proof. I, I wish we could show you guys the proof, but it, we will not be doing uh, that. Hell no. It's, it's our right personal, it's our kid. personal stash yeah. of whatever the fuck it is. But fuck out. I gotta prove shit but, to you. Exa- exactly. <laughs> but but, but pr- put our word on it that we are growing every week, and now because of this new treasure chest we just got of new equipment. <laughs> We're only going up from here, so uh, big things coming, guys. So yeah, so um, the, the the numbers, the ad, uh, the analyticals I'm seeing from Belgium, I'm seeing from England, I'm seeing from India, India yeah. from Asia. The, people are actually sitting there and enjoying the show, so which makes me happy. Yeah, it's great. So make Rewarding. sure you check you, you you guys check us out on there as well. And as always, check out RageWorks.net. RageWorks.net is where you get all things that are catered to the culture. And that's pop culture, ladies and gentlemen. We talk yes. about movies, TV shows, comic books, and of course, video games. Which, by the way, please go into your tirade <laughs> about oh, fucking what happened this week. Today, this week was an absolute disaster on the video games end. Uh, so, as we all know, of course, you know the PlayStation Five and Xbox is coming out um, rather soon in, in the next couple of months, which. There was a PlayStation conference this week, Red, you know, and, and which before I could finish what I was going to say, what do you thought about the PlayStation conference? Did it sell the console for you? Oh, the, the, the console was already sold for me, but the... Um, that Miles Morales game is unreal. Dude. But you know what? There were certain games that I, and I looked and I said, to be honest with you, I don't see them as PS5 games. I thought they were PS4 kind of games as well. Well, they are on both. Some of them. Well, the yeah, exclusives but are on both. But in I terms of graphics... For, I was looking for a lot of games that were... Enhancing. Well, just well, they they even said that like the stream was on thirty frames per second, but the games are on sixty. Okay. The stream made it look worse. Like they, they believe, and and that and that just happens in general. Like, right, right, right. Like that just happens because it's, you know, it's not you know it's not portraying the real stream of the game. Right. So I wasn't worried about that because in the beginning, believe me, I was watching Miles Morales as well, and I was like, eh, this looks like PS4. Right. But like I said, the stream was thirty frames, the game sixty. But. You're, but the PS5 is an easy buy for you. Oh, definitely, definitely. So let's just so so here we go. So uh, Reg, Reg can agree with me on this, and he can even confirm this one with everyone here. I had a plan. The plan was I will be parked outside GameStop because once the PlayStation conference is over, I know they're going to announce pre-orders. Got it. So <laughs> I had a whole plan. X Red, we were going to drop. I was outside my car waiting for the fucking pre-orders. So the PlayStation conference ends, and I call up GameStop, and I go, hey, guys, what's going on? Do you guys know anything about the PlayStation 5 pre-orders? The guy goes, dude, I have no idea. We weren't told anything yet. Um, I actually have no idea when the pre-orders will be up, so just keep up, keep updated. I'm like, okay, cool. I hang up the phone. I'm chilling on my phone, and all of a sudden I see a receipt from our GameStop, Ridgewood, New York, Myrtle Avenue, PS5 pre-order on it. And he goes, I got mine. I said, what the fuck just happened? I call up GameStop again. He goes, hello, my name is John, and we're all sold out of the PS5. How are you? The magic of the new the mixer. Magic of the magic of the new mixer, guys. <laughs> and let me tell you, I almost went off because he, he basically lied straight to my face. I said, dude, you just told me you didn't. He explained to me what happened, and this is what happened. For everyone out there who's upset that they don't have a pre-order right now. Yeah, because but there's, there's, a lot of people didn't understand what the hell they happened. They don't understand what happened, and people are confused as to what the fuck happened. Because Sony, later after the conference, confirmed that pre-orders will be going down tomorrow. Not not, not today, but like the day after the, the conference, the 17th. So I heard that, and I already told Red. I was like, yo, I'm going to be there early. I'll pick you up, and we'll go outside GameStop. We had a whole plan. What happened was... Walmart pulled the trigger a day early. And Walmart posted a link on Twitter saying, you think we're going to make you wait for the PS5 pre-order? Wrong. Click this link and pre-order now. And Walmart's pre-orders went up. And the the world basically went silent. And then they went fucking rushing to the fucking went, door. They went rushing to the fucking door like... Black Friday on Cyber Monday, fam. It was an absolute mess. So, what happened was, I don't know if anyone's in the retail game. Any, I'm not, but I know the the, the 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 universal rule that if one retail store breaks date, 
they all got a break date. For instance, like in, in the podcasting game, like if I reveal, if our show reveals something, then the, all the other shows got to reveal something, like so, something like that. So what happened was after I called GameStop, the pre-orders went up because Walmart put them up first. People ran into GameStop like it was no tomorrow, no masks. It became an absolute war zone. GameStop already sold out. All the stores online already sold out. And I'm freaking out. I'm losing. I, I even called Vert. I'm like, yo, bro, it's fuck. they fucking sold out when you were sleeping. And uh, I literally was supposed to go there and have a guaranteed pre-order. But because they told me tomorrow, I didn't fucking go. So, and everyone here is mad at Sony. Everyone online who's mad at Sony. I have one thing to tell you. It's not their fault. No, I'm, I'm mad I at Sony. I don't blame so- I'm Sony, not, I'm though. Mad at, I'm mad at Sony because of, you know, the, you already knew that there was going to be a high demand for this. Your last... Pretty much your last three systems. No, sorry, your last two systems. They they fairly well. Uh, Better than Xbox. Your PS4 was bananas. Oh, it it was the number one selling console ever. Right, Uh, and the 360 outsold the PS3. They did that. Xbox won that console war. If you want to call it a war, then PlayStation won this one. Right, but still, you already knew the supply and demand for this. And then when you looked in the out the the out uh, the outsourcing of the, the 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 fan base who were sitting there going, "Listen, we we're." We're gonna buy this shit regardless. It could have a piece of shit that comes out on the fucking uh, the, trade the, yeah. table, and, I still and, buy like, it. and it's gonna stink for three, th- three or four minutes. But you're gonna love it. I'll the still fans be, I'll be still like, playing yeah. Miles Morales. Yeah, it's open. Is it? It should be. You know, the the, the fan base is gonna, they're still gonna fucking love it. So the only thing that I say, and mind you, like I said, you, we spoke about it before. Blame COVID. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Blame COVID. But other than that, it's Which, it goes to... But, 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 Still, you should have known. You had a whole time of doing that. One second. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that but, now. But, but, dude, but, but, dude, I don't think I don't think Sony has a stock problem. Like, you, like I said... You don't re- think it's a stock problem? Because you want to know why? Because they're restocking every day. Um, people think that because it's sold out, that means that Walmart has no more stock left. That's wrong. They're just doing it in... They're doing it in... They're doing it in... In... In fl- in fluctuate, they're doing it in th- in what the fuck do you call it? They're doing it in rounds. Right, 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 right. It's going, it's shifting. They're doing it in rounds, so you can, it's not a stock problem. The problem is people were mad that Sony li- quote unquote lied to the fucking people that it was tomorrow. Right. It wasn't their fault though, because Walmart literally said, "I don't care about your due date. I'm going on my own terms." Hence the whole fucking system going lost. By the way, this is a wrestling show, right? Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> but opening salvo is always random bullshit. So Which, <laughs> I want to give a quick update. Yes, I did get the the PS5. I, uh, the Amazon was the only group who the only Amazon's the only group who didn't break the rules, and they went at midnight, and I ended up grabbing one real quickly. Um, so you you're the you I hope you're playing the system with um, condoms on your fingers because I wished AIDS on all you guys. Well, hopefully you didn't wish AIDS on me because no, because bro, I, I still have the alerts on no, for no, you. No, 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 no. But, but, and it's no, is, it's not petty shit. I want to help you because this no, is bullshit. I know, I know, I know, but it, it's funny because people are really thinking that I'm. Upset, yeah, people think you mad. And I'm like, I'm not really mad. I, no. I, I say it in jokes. Yeah. I'm gonna get it anyway. Yeah, no. Even if I get it in February, you I don't won't. Care. You, you're gonna get it at but once. I, said, I don't even care. I, I know, but you're. you're, you're I'll, I'll I'll get promise. Anyway. I promise you, you'll get it before Christmas. I guarantee it. So, uh, before we could continue the show, I have to give a big special shout out. On this week's episode to an individual in my life who, without them, I wouldn't be who I am right now. No, Maddie, it's not you. I know you would think it's you, but I know. it's not you. Uh-huh. Isaac, you just walked in. It's not you either, but you guys are very special to me. Familia. Family. And plus, you know, donate to the Patreon. You're giving me more money. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I have to give a special shout, shout out to... Someone who, who who just changed me as a person in, in general in my whole life, and this person has been making me pers- uh, making me be a better person every day, every week, every year. The whole cliche shit, but not only that, this person has shown that there is with the negative fucking life and society and the disgusting ways people are in this world. Yeah. This person has shown that there is hope for us in the future that 
there is a possibility that there is a better life for us, especially and you know you're 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 younger than me, but still you're still facing the same bullshit and nastiness, yeah. and disgusting. Yeah, I am. But this person has shown that day by day, year by year, they have a better idea, better opportunist look of how we can make this world better. And I have to say, happy birthday to my baby girl, super producer Sally. Yes, I have a. I have a teenager. She's 13. Yeah. You officially have a teenager. Well, when her birthday, you have a teenager fan. I have a teenager, and I, I would have never. And, and I you don't told know, me last year how crazy that is. It's so crazy. Yay, Presidente, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isaac brings me Presidente, and it's cold. Um, no, but not only that, it's 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 an idea that you're going to have a woman. It's it's also <laughs> the idea that, you know, I never, I, I don't know if people knew about it. I never thought that I would have a kid. I right. never knew how I, I would bear children because I, I I I never really felt as though that I was the father type or that I would find somebody that would want to bear children with me. Right, right. It's like look, look at this fucking I got fucking collectibles hanging all over my wall. It's all good. <laughs> all my my whole Listen, life. Listen, you gotta find the right girl who likes that kind but of shit. But it's also the kind of thing to where it's like look, it, it, it's a tough world to live in. But honestly, she has made this world. A better place to fucking live. Absolutely, in. she's awesome. So happy birthday to my baby girl. Yes, super producer Sally. Thirteen, my Sally Bear. Thirteen years old, going Unreal. on a fucking forty six because she's a fucking old hag. So <laughs> it's okay. love you, babe. It's and, unreal. Um, and uh, on with the show. So, Matt, what we have on the show this week? On this week's episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid, we have cutting a promo, which will be we will be discussing underutilized talent on wrestling. Oh. Brands beyond oh, brands. We'll talk about who deserves a better shot, who's being wasted, and who maybe should go somewhere else. We have Wrestling Rundown, which will where we will be discussing um, WWE possibly moving out of Thunderdome already to, to an outside venue. Uh, Tony Khan uh, and, and bullshit going on in the back. Supposedly, there was a shoot fight on AEW Dynamite this week yeah. between two wrestlers, and something might be going yes. down. Yes, bitch. Yes. Uh, and also, um, a guy that you drank a beer with, James Storm, is a free agent. So yes. we'll, we'll be discussing where he might be going. And then we have, of course, um, around the squared circle uh, with uh, our Get Vocal partnership uh, to discuss the week in wrestling, which I thought it was actually pretty fun. We have SmackDown going on in a little bit, so we'll um, we'll have that for you guys and uh, much more. And then we also have um, Impact Brody stopping by, right? Uh, hopefully, if he, uh, if he uh, makes if it. If he makes it. But other than that, we fucking keep the show going, ladies and gentlemen. If he doesn't, we'll have Brody Impact come. Wait, um... <laughs> 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 With the roadcast the pro, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I love this shit. Guys, don't go in the red, stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a sec. See you guys. God, I wanna fuck this thing. This is Vincent Kennedy McMahon. A couple of weeks you have heard barraging news about against my professional wrestlers. It's as though they were that were circulating that I initiated an agenda in which my risk to go on social media. Now, let's be honest. The stories were true. I do not want any of my wrestlers to be a part of social media. I made a change. And I had a proclamation to fight and basically make us come together. Not only as a company, but as a promotion and as a family. So I, McMahon, bring to you Tice WWE. That's Rough Sports presents WWE social media. It's a Vincent Kennedy McMahon creation. I'm going to take all the other social medias and crush them and check the poison and get them out of our social climate. For instance, no more YouTube with Titan Sports presents WWE social media. We'll now have Mac YouTube. It is not YouTube. It's Mac YouTube. So all our WWE wrestlers, our talent can go out there and film all the video content they want on Mac YouTube. But wait, there's more. You know that outlet where all those simple-minded, feeble-minded, little p- 
piss poor video gamers play their Pac-Man and their Mario Brothers and asteroid video games? Well, you know what? Now we have Mac Twitch. Now our wrestlers can really get out there and get their gaming on on games like Mr. Do or Dig Dug and Burger Time with Mac Twitch. It's a it's a site to play video games on. We here at Titan Sports WWE social media. We also have an outlet for where our performers, our entertainers, can share their thoughts, opinions, and other things on social media. We have Mac Bookface and Mac Twatter. Those are both their outlets where you can use to think about today's political climate, our current media, our, our day's events, and what you think about other wrestling promotions that's not tied to WWE. Our wrestlers can go on Mac Bookface and Mac Twatter. Although our wrestlers are independent contractors, I still own them. But to make them feel more free and feel as though that they don't have to go anywhere else, you can go to Titan Sports Presents WWE social media or else you're fired. Coming soon will be McCameo so you can say happy birthday and happy anniversary and sorry for your loss on McCameo. Under the WWE banner. And I'm bringing back Tout, damn it. I'm bringing back Tout. This paid advertisement was brought to you by... Turnbuckle Tabloid. Hi, this is Evander James, most honest man in professional wrestling, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Perfect. And you can trust that. Even better. Thank you, sir. Buckle Tabloid, cutting a promo. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, cutting a promo this week is unutilized talents. And believe me, while I'm watching SmackDown right now, yeah, there might be an argument to this thing. Oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, and I'm not only talking about WWE, we're talking about in all spectrums of, of wrestling. We, we got to go up and down the whole line because... It's not only WWE who could be accused of this this practice, but they all can. It, they all can. They all also, can. It's also a thing to where we also have to take in consideration to where, look, not everybody's gonna be a champion because everybody wants their their favorite to be a champion. Doesn't work that way. We also gotta look in in, in, in the spectrum of using them effectively in storylines that can progress them to something else. Can be, or is it that honestly, are we just using or taking these guys for your promotion just to say we got them and that's it? I think it's all the above. Uh, You know, let me ask you everybody talks about the whole raping of the, and by the way, if you hear the clarity of the show, it's gonna be amazing because we have no shit here. Yes. Um, Everybody talks about how Triple H raped. The indies. the indies. Okay. Was, you know, is there a justification to say that he just took them just to say that he took them? Um, I think when it comes to Triple H, I don't think that was the case. I think, I think he had a, had an idea of what he wanted NXT to be, which as much as you want to admit it or not, NXT was doing great, but they needed those. They needed, they needed the star power to be successful. I mean, let's be real. I, I mean, I, I I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news here, but they NXT would have not survived with Bo Dallas as their NXT champion. They needed the big dogs. They needed the Adam Coles, the Kevin Owens, the the Sami Zayns, 
uh, to make it work. I don't think Triple H had the intent of raping the indies to just to rape the indies. I think he realized that he had something special here with NXT. And in order to make it go from zero to hero, he needed to get those stars. Uh, I do think Vince McMahon hires people just to say fuck it, 100%. And it's clear on the main roster um, who he likes and who he doesn't. But what, what, what do you think about Triple H? Because I, I truly think that he knew what he had to do. Because think about it. Back then, there was no competition. Right. AEW wasn't even a thing. I think Triple H had it with intent of, okay, Vince is looking at me like this NXT thing could be really big. I'm going all out. And I'm going to recruit the, the, the as many guys as I need to. To, to succeed that's the goal of of, of 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 owning a brand and i can't be mad at triple h for that i think what, what happened with um with the whole quote-unquote raping or stealing from the indies there was good intent when it came from triple h i do think so as well and a lot of the guys that he took from the indies let's say the kevin owens the the sammy zane sammy zane's the the even the seth rollins and such the idea and the premise was there because he did utilize them. Big time. The, the Pox, the, yeah. the, 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 the Ricochets. These guys, they were utilized. In, Even Baron in, Corbin was utilized in fucking NXT, guys. Let's be real. Uh, but he wasn't an indie guy. Yeah, if we're, talking about, indie about, guy. If we're talking about indies, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few more names you could bring up uh, easily. Um, for NXT, you could like, like the Kevin knows the Adam yeah, Coles. Um, 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 Johnny Gargano. Um, Ciampa. Chopper, which he's still doing great well, things Chopper, there. Chopper, yeah, yeah, Chopper. Was but he a, was known in the indies. Yeah, yeah. He was in Evolve for quite some time. The right. Keith Lees, like you know, the I, I never saw a bad intent with Triple H, and I and to be honest, every single guy he signed, he's trying his best to put over. Everyone's like, he's ruining Kushida. I'm like, not really, not really. Uh, which I'll discuss why later. I think that goes to my universal point of this segment, uh, but. I don't think Triple H had any bad intent. And for anyone to say he raped the Indies, at the end of the day, if you were in his, in his position, you would have done the exact same thing. Now let's let, let's look, let's look at the 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 modern day the current events of raping the Indies. Yep. All elite wrestling should be fucking the the preface of raping the Indies. Yeah, well, they had a master plan for two years, and they they did exactly what they were that they sought out to do, which they did it without people even understanding or realizing what they did. Um, you could even can, you could even agree with me on this one. We saw Cody and the Young Bucks in the Indies a lot after they left WWE. After he left WWE, and after the whole New Japan gig, they were in the Indies. They were doing shows anywhere they could go for the pure reason of scouting, and no one knew. That they were there to scout. But they did. And they took the people that they went to events. They were working events for however mu much money they, they were they, they were asking for. But they weren't there for the purpose of getting bread, right? You understand that, right? right, right. They were there for the intent of who is over as fuck at these shows so we could build a roster. They knew All Elite was going to be a thing before All Elite was even confirmed. They were scouting the talent and they raped... Oh, I'm, I hate that word. They... They invested in the talent they saw that were over the most during their indie run, which, once again, you can't blame them. Though you would have done the exact same thing they did. You can, can you agree with me on that one? Yeah. By the way, the phone lines are open, ladies and gentlemen. Three one five three seven one four three six seven. That's three one five three seven one four three six seven. Phone lines are open. We guys can have a discussion about this because um, I know a lot of a lot of individuals and and listeners to the show will have. Some kind of uh, of feeling about this because there's talent that's not being utilized properly, but it's also talent that may not deserve their their push, and it's also a thing to where you grab them just for the sake of grabbing them. Uh, I'm gonna call right now. Turn broker tabloid. Who's this? Yeah, this is Henry. Henry, what's up? Uh, the angry Puerto Rican lazy Henry. Hey, I, I, I'm drinking the Madelia just for you. You're the angry Puerto Rican, sir. Thank you for calling in, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yo, I, I was waiting patiently. So you say the phone lines are open because this topic is very, very interesting. What you guys talking about, the underutilized guys. AEW right now is one of those... Um, one of those promotions that underutilizing a lot of the guys there. Like, 
when they first got Peter Avalon and yeah, Peter Avalon, when they got him, I was like, are they really going to use this guy? Are they going to push him at least to the mid card? Where, oh, please. Know, Matt loved him. When he got signed, Pat was a, uh, Matt who? was a sign. Uh, the, the librarian. No, no I wasn't. Yeah, that's that, that was no, I, yeah, that was no, I wasn't. I was excited. I was laughing at the fucking so, gimmick. I don't know who he was beyond <laughs> this. I, no, no, I, but, I, but no, but if you think about it, when he first got signed, when I saw Peter Avalon, now I had seen Peter Avalon in the Indies. I'm like, I didn't really, you know, I saw him in the BTE. I said, they're really going to push this guy to at least Nick Carr. So you, we don't even see this guy in Dynamite. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's like it's embarrassing. Brandon Cutler, two, two raw on, on contract, and he's an AEW dark. You, you know they got too, they got a lot of talent, and it's only a two hour show. And, and this is one of the things that I was I got into arguing with any, somebody because they said, "Oh, why AEW didn't inside Jeff Cobb for what? If they got only two hour show, they got a bunch of people that they they have. Lance Archer didn't get pushed to just recently." With with the uh, the all out uh, casino battle royal that he won, otherwise he would have been like you wouldn't even see him. So they got too many guys in there that they they're not using. They use you know, and I understand you're trying to put everybody in in one for storyline for the week, but it, there's a lot of guys there that they could use, but they need they need a third hour. There's no way in the world you got all that talent. And you got some guys that are uh, Mick Carter that you're not even using, like a uh, Joey Janela. Yeah, okay, Janela is a hardcore wrestler and all that stuff, but he could be used in a better storyline. They're not using him. So, you know, everybody talks about WWE. I mean, WWE is known for not using a lot of their fucking talent, but AEW doesn't stay behind. No, the, the, but you got you to gotta think about it like this, too. The, uh, when it comes to AEW, they're working on getting another show. Apparently, there is one. In the in the books, they want to follow that whole a uh, method of WCW, where they do the Saturday the Saturday shows as well, which will be their second yeah. show. But I can see, yeah. it, but even them, it's underutilized talent that maybe shouldn't even be there. I'm the guy that says that I'm not a fan of the librarian kind of gimmick. Like, what <laughs> what is it there for? Unless you're using them for enhancement kind of talent. I'm not, I, that was that was a stupid gimmick from the get go. Well, the minute I heard it, it was stupid. Yeah, but Henry, Henry, and, uh, and Red, you, you know, in the wrestling business, it, it comes down to, I think, I think the problem with AEW was they they they, they kind of rushed their their choices with the roster because they were desperate to fill up those slots early on, but for the most part. You could see AEW's main group of guys, and I'm not talking about the dudes on AEW Dark because I hate to break the news to everyone on this show, but AEW Dark is full of in- of talent that aren't even signed to the company. They are doing tryouts every week, but this is why. Um, quick shout to a House of Glory student, Big Daddy Cruz, is getting his spot, his shot on AEW Dark next week. Yeah, uh, and, and, and it's, it's great to see. Really? But it's great to see. It's great to see. But 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 that but see but but that shows you that AEW Dark is mainly. Not even sign, signed guys. They're tryouts, and they're just – they want to give a spotlight for these dudes. Maybe AEW messed up on that point, but in the wrestling business, you have to understand that sometimes it's underutilizing talent, but sometimes it's just the way of the pinwheel. CM Punk said it perfect. If I'm gone, people will fill my spot. I am not going to be WWE champion for 45 years. Everyone has a turn. Everyone has a time that they're going to be put over. For example, AEW just showed this perfectly. Lance Archer was the most over guy for his first couple of months in AEW, correct? He lost that match against uh, he lost that match against Cody Rhodes, correct? What did he do after he lost that match? He went on AEW Dark for a good two months, and now he's back in the championship picture. Want to know why? Because people take turns. Just because he's not on TV every week doesn't mean he's being underutilized. It means that he's 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 rotating. They're rotating the 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 the, the pendulum, whatever the fuck you want to call it, pendulum? the pendulum yeah. of of the way it goes. It's like it's like an NBA team. You have your starting five, but if someone gets hurt, you need to have a Peter Ivalon on the bench, or you need to have a Brian Pillman Jr. on the bench. So if when they get stale and when the crowd's over them, they could fill in and take that spot. Right? What do you think about what, that? Um, it's a rotation I gimmick. I get it, but there's also a, a a measure to where we have to look at 
All right, fine. They're they they're they're there to serve a purpose. Everyone has a role. But like we they, also, like you always say that. Yeah, but we're also looking at talent that's just being wasted. They're just sitting on a bench for but nothing. See, no, no, and you're right. And, and there I, are there I, are I, talent that are there are talent that are being wasted. But I think that that the percentage of people who are being wasted is way lower than the people who you're talking about in terms of who are riding the bench, quote unquote. Henry, before 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 we let you go, uh, just gotta ask you on the spectrum of all promotions, what talent right now that's on the rosters is being underutilized and it's not being used effectively? Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know. To me, I still, I still think AEW. They got a couple of guys in there that I think they could be pushing, and they're not doing it. So, Ooh, and, and besides, any names? Before, Anyone in particular? Besides, uh, well, like I said, uh, like one guy, like I said, Peter Avalon. That guy, They why you signed him? If that guy's been with them for almost a year, I think it was before that, and he's never on ever in Dynamite. The yep. guy, he, he signed. With AEW, yes, he's not one. Of, I mean, even though he's, uh, he's, he's an AEW dark with performance uh, enhancing talent, whatever. But why he's not being pushed? Get that fucking librarian gimmick away from him and push him. That's the way but I Henry, can end. But my second, my, my second remark, real quick. Go ahead. AEW needs to stop fucking signing every fucking body that comes out of WWE to bring them into their roster. Because the more people you have, then the other guys who are still waiting for their turn. They're never going to get their turn. So they need to stop that boat. Well, the one thing I could tell you is that uh, for a guy like Peter Avalon, the one place that would probably work better for him would have been Impact. I think that it would have been a, yeah. a, better, a better work. And, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and, Henry, mm-hmm. and Henry, I think when we, we talk about underutilized, I mean, maybe you like Peter Avalon. I think he is AEW dark for the rest of his career. Maybe he, maybe um, for now. Um, underutilized. I'm talking about like who's someone that like should be like on Dynamite every week. I don't think Peter Avalon goes in that column. I don't. Uh, maybe I. Maybe you. Maybe you think so. But you know, so uh, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, someone that you know, you know, you know, someone in AEW who is you know, you you know, you know, this is my first pick. I guess we're gonna go on the table. I guess Henry gave one. I'll give one. You know who's someone in AEW who's being treated like absolute dog shit and should be possibly in the championship run right now. I'm actually really upset about Pentagon. Pentagon went from the top guy in Lucha Underground to being now in a Lucha Bros stable with fucking with um with Eddie Kingston. But but he came for he came in as a tag team, so that's the way they're looking at him for now. Right. Remember, they, they they went even further and put him with Pac, we called the Death Triangle, which was great. All this shit happened, so so now he's still stuck on that tag team. But who knows? Maybe they'll use him down the line later on for you know. Of course. Do, um, no. All right, no, yeah, all right, yeah. Henry. Thanks for calling in as always, bro. And um, just a quick, just a quick shout out to you. Just um, just uh, let everybody know where they could get you on in your podcast. Yeah, I'll be at the Choke Slam Rescue Report. You guys can find me Apple, Spotify. Um, I'm also gonna be part of a uh, a group called um, Hit Sports Network. They're gonna be on YouTube, and you can see my my shows there on Mondays and Fridays from one to two. All right, so, brother. Thanks for everything, and thanks for supporting. All right, Henry. Uh, Anytime, brother. Later. Like I know, I know Pentagon will be used. But, but that's a good. That, that, that's actually good, though. I like that because we've always seen him as excel a big as a signing and as singles guy, right. especially like and on Lucha Underground. And everything. When I heard Pentagon was signed, I'm like, wow, that's a big name. But it's also a thing to where you didn't need to bring him in with, with Ray Phoenix because Ray could have been. An individual himself. They both could be great singles guys alone. They don't need to be the Lucha Bros. We have too many tag teams. And I and I think that um, just to segue quickly, and then we'll go back. Was um, Ray, um, um, All Elite needs a like a cruiserweight because that yeah that's only half yeah <laughs> there's, yeah. there's not really anybody who consider like a heavyweight kind of guy. No, they all have cruiserweights. Right. I mean, so the only heavyweight I could say like right now is probably like Will Hobbs and Brian Cage and Lance Archer. That's like about, that's about. I love that JD sitting in that, that JD sitting in the WWE's an adult soap opera, which it is. It basically is. It is. Though. Uh, I, I always tell people WWE is like General Hospital, but people actually fight <laughs> when they get mad. Like, they, right. they don't cut to commercial; they actually fight. They actually uh, fight. Uh, so that's that's what I say when I defend the company. Uh, what about you? Uh, you got you got a pick from any? Um, maybe uh, maybe we do all elite first if you want to go, or you want to go around. Well, uh, um, yeah, I, I would go to all elite first. Um, Pentagon Junior is very, in my opinion, underutilized. Uh, yeah, because now I'm professional because I have a fucking um, I, I have a list. Look at you. Uh, look at me. I'm working over here. All right. Um, 
Let me let me reset all the Lee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me okay, that. um uh one of them is um Shima. Shima's a guy that could be used way more than he is at right now. I don't even let, know the last time I saw Shima. Exactly. Uh, but is he stuck over somewhere? I don't know. Maybe because, um, maybe he's he's stuck, but when he comes back, I've seen him for months. One. But a bigger one on that on that roster that got a slight push, but now you put him in something different was Scorpio Sky. Hell yeah! What Hell the yeah. fuck? He is he's lost in the woods when he should actually be, in my opinion, he should be North. He should be um TNT champion. Or at opinion. least or he should on be facing Brody Lee for it. Yeah. Like, you know, that should be the storyline right now. Scorpio Sky, and everyone keeps saying he's the rookie in SCU. No, he's the best wrestler in SCU. Get that straight. Granted, you can't take anything away from Christopher Daniels or from uh, Kazarian. You can't because they're le- 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 in my opinion, they're legends. They're great. And I can't I can't really pull too much out of the bag because uh, we're gonna do a cutting a promo in the next couple of weeks about um, the one year anniversary of, of All Elite. Yeah, and we'll talk about the the pros and cons and what needs to ha- what we feel needs to happen. You believe it? Yet. It's already been the year and over year. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But um, ups and down, down, downs. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what we're looking at is is what 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 individuals in that because. Every, it, to me, when I look at All Elite, everything is like crabs in a barrel. Everybody's climbing to get out of that shit, and yep. it, they're they're forcing the talent to to pull the other ones down. It's it, it kills me to do, see do that. Do you think? Do you think it comes down to this? Goes for any company. Do you think the 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 topic of underutilizing talent, or maybe not spotlighting them a lot, is maybe? Do you think? Do you think it's a it's a it's it's a kind of a fear of them scared to go along with these guys just to get um, a fourth down. Um, like the Darby Allens or the um or the the Scorpio Skies, like we know the talent is there. But do you think these promoters are scared to go for the Hail Mary and go? You know what? I like him, but I will know, the world like him? I think right now, in all of their 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 target is basically saying, look, um, we gotta hit the home runs with the talent that's already known, the Moxleys, the Codys, okay, for Jericho, the, uh, the Jerichos. We gotta trying to expand with those for the first year because if we can't do it that way, then What's the purpose? That's why you didn't see really much with like the Kenny Omegas. Because remember, we had the other conversations before about the um, the guys who went overseas, like the Kenny yeah. Omegas, the, yep. the, the the young bucks. They knew that coming to the states is like, yeah, they're great overseas, but you know, different the, the, over the, the, here. The, the, completely, the, they're not really the face. So look at look at their titles. The, the champions right now, all their champions is former WWE guys. Let's see, Moxley. Is it smart booking or is it? Um... It's smart booking for now, yeah. and, and people have to understand. Uh, just be. How many years have w- has WWE been um, consistently running television shows yeah, since please. the yeah. 80s? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the one year of AEW. So, do they I gotta bl- put the guys that they know? Do I blame them for putting Chris Jericho, someone that wrestling fans around the globe know, no. as champion? No. Uh, do I blame them for fucking shoving the elite down our throats for this first year? No, because they're trying to gain a consistent audience and tr- they're trying to reach people. If you go to if you go down the block, Red, and you see someone who has maybe an old wrestling shirt but hasn't watched wrestling in a while, and you tell him, you know, there's a new show called All Elite Wrestling on TNT, and he goes, okay, but like, why would I watch it? All you have to say is two words, and he'd be like, all right, I'm gonna check it out, right. Chris Jericho. And go, word? Why two J's on that shit? Yeah. I'm going to check that out on Wednesday. I got you, bro. Yeah, but what happens to No the one's going to go, yo, MJF, to, dog. Not but, yet. But what happens to the ones that, you know, that everybody was pining for, that they was fighting, that the indie guys get their freedom. They, they're able to push. Like, um, JD right now was talking about Orange Cassidy getting the push. And it's like... That was a Tony you, Khan did choice. You re- exactly. Did you really think that... I, I, is he really going to be a guy that goes for no. a legit championship no, run? No, no. And even in, – and Sean Ross even said it. He goes, I'm sorry, AEW. I appreciate your attempt at this Orange Cassidy thing, but I will never see him as AEW champion. I don't even know if I can see him as TNT champion. Uh, but that's that's where it comes down to the negatives of sometimes you pick them right, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you put your, your, your name in a hat and you get the right pick, sometimes you don't. I'm mo- I'm more mad at the Orange Cassidy push because I know that wasn't a group decision. That was Tony Khan going. That's my boy. Yeah, they're best friends in later life. If you guys don't know that, like Tony Khan has two favorites, and it's Joey Janela and it's Orange Cassidy. They literally hang out all the time. 
So he dressed up as Orange Cassidy for Halloween. I, I, That's I, what bothers me. Because I, I, Tony Khan, you threw a Hail Mary, and in my opinion, you missed. I, 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 and, I, and someone that I had on my list that – I mean, someone that I didn't have on my list, sorry. Someone I didn't have on my list that I just thought about now, right now that's underutilized, that needs to get a bigger push, and it's not in because AW? we know them. Yeah, in AEW. And we're going we're gonna to transition soon. Um, is Mark Quinn. Well, he's stuck with a tag team right now. So until that it's happens, terrible. until that ha- until that breaks up, and seems like Mark Quinn. Isaac, you like Mark Quinn? He like? That's what we were looking for. I'll he's, take that as a yes. Take that as a yes. No, I think I think I. But I, that's I, a problem with tag teams in this, in this day and age. I think that a guy like him is one of those that you because we've seen him on numerous occasions as a singles guy or whatever, and he's done amazing things as a singles guy. Yeah, and we haven't seen a blip of what he can do on AEW. If you put him as a singles guy on the Utilize, yeah, it, he is. And do do you think that's a? I actually think I, I was thinking about the whole. Cause I was talking to someone at Royal Collectibles about this. Um, shout out to Tommy. Uh, Royal Collectibles, Royal Collectibles in New York City. Lately. Um, I was talking about. You want anything that has to deal with uh, collectibles? It's Royal, baby. It's Royal, baby. Do you think ever since the whole Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty thing happened, it's easier to wean out who's the star in tag teams? And do you feel bad <sighs> for these? T- do you and feel bad for the Mark Quinn? No offense. And this is not shitting on Isaiah Cassidy or any of the other teammates. What I'm saying is because ever since Shawn Michaels broke out from Marty Jannetty, people are saying that now you could easily tell who the star is. And now you feel more sympathy for that guy going, oh, you're stuck in a team. I'm, um, wa- I'm waiting for you to pull a show on my Yes, this. yeah, yeah, that that works. But the other thing is, like, is that holding him back? But that also pushes your partner to go harder because yeah. you look at FTR, you look at the Usos, you look at tag teams like that to where equals to me. You don't want them to break up. No, because those are those are those, are, but those are original homegrown but tag still, teams. But no, no, you say that, but still, you could look at those guys and go, yeah, I, I can see what a star is at here and there. Who's the star in FTR? Uh, to me, uh, um, what, uh, Dash. I honestly don't. Dash. Dash. Really? Yeah. I don't have. I. But I'm, I'm, this is a dead Dash. ass. This is dead ass. As a wrestler, Dash is. As a speaker, it's um the other fucking guy. Like no, but but but, but, uh, but I'm talking um, about like a Sean and Sean and Marty kind of situation where like it's it was clearly Dash, Dash, clearly Dash Sean. For me is Dash. Um, and the Usos, Jay is. Clearly, now he's in fucking he's in the championship but, right but now. But I knew that before that. You could tell. Yeah, it's it's it was that easy to do. But um, um but you know, it, it sucks because it is clear <laughs> that sometimes these tag team pairings, like Cesaro was being held back in tag team it's division like, um, for JD life. Just said, JD just said, just said, in the Street Profits, come on, let's be honest. Montez um, Ford's a star, and exactly, Angelo Dawkins, yeah, will, it, Angelo it, Dawkins it, will die in the wind if, yeah. if they ever break up. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's sad, but he'll it's fade, true. He'll fade in the wind. It's, it's unfortunate, but yeah, it's true. He'll be manager for him tomorrow if that's the case. Yeah. Um, and, and who who else do you have on your list? Because I'll, I'll go next if you want. I mean. Another person. Well, let's go to WWE. Let's go. WWE. WWE. Um, there's a lot of them, uh, unfortunately. But like I said, WWE is a pinwheel. It is a. Um, it's a pen. It's a pendulum, like you said. It, everyone has a role, like on a basketball team. You can't be mad that you don't see someone on TV. Like everyone's mad. What you, everyone's mad about the Mustafa Ali thing, which I want to talk about to you real quick. Everyone's upset that this is Mustafa Ali. He just came back and he's on main event for five, six weeks in a row. Should we be mad at that? I mean, no, we shouldn't. Look, it's not his turn. We always get we always get this idea, this premise of um, our favorite guy needs to be somewhere, and right, like we we're it's, craving. It's not like, gonna happen. It's not how it works, Red. And you know that. How, but I still have this idea that where, yeah, guys are underutilized because you could still put them on a show. And even though they're not going to go over match-wise, but gimmick-wise, they are going to be something amazing. The reason why I, I brought this premise to you yeah. was the rumors of um, Ricochet, Ricochet. Which was, is wrestling right now. We'll discuss it now. Um, is he on your list? Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, think, I, I just don't think he's a WWE guy. In my opinion, I don't I, think I don't think he's built. I don't think he's made for WWE. I I, I feel that I, I I feel that he took the money and was great. Yeah. But if he was a Triple H guy, he would be 
bigger than what he is. Oh yeah, he'd be NXT North American champion right now. Please. Not, only, not no, well, he was, but even he'll be so, it again. He'll be he would. But not only that, um, you will be booked in matches to where you you also gotta you also gotta look at you also gotta look at to where the criteria is. You gotta beat me to get to the bigger the, to get to the champ. Yeah. Even though you're not the champ, you still have to go past have me. To, like, you have to get past me to prove. Well, and you can fucking have five star matches mm-hmm. with that kind of fucking idea. Well, that, and Ricochet is that guy. So was Finn Balor before he won the championship again. Right. He did have that role where you he's like, You have to I'm, come through me yeah. to show that you're championship caliber. Ricochet's earned that, you think? Of course. Well, but to not, us, on the main not, roster. not on the main roster. Not on yeah, the main roster, no. I think when it comes down to Ricochet, I just I, – I hate to say it. I see him on the main roster, and I just don't – he's the puzzle piece that doesn't fit. He's a Vince guy is, that he is should not have a Vince guy. The, he should have never left NXT. Nope. And I think that he Good looking go guy. Back. Athletic as fuck, but you see, he reminds he, me of he, – he, he acts for me. He became a low-level fucking Mark Quinn. Yeah, he did. It and became. it sucks because his potential goes way beyond that. And no, guys, I don't want him in AEW. I really fucking don't. What I'm saying is Ricochet has, is that kind of talent that he deserves better. He, he does, 100%. Ricochet is one of those guys. Um, Dre, you just said it. Yo, I, you don't see him as an AEW guy. You see him as a New Japan guy. He's always that, – that, that fits his mold. Yeah. But the problem King is – King Ricochet. Is that, but the problem is is that when you got a guy with that talent, that caliber – you could build him to be a main event guy in WWE for five years. Yeah. But you threw him in that that fold too early just because you wanted to get the fucking ratings up and you didn't do shit for him. Nothing. And every match that he does now, you haven't even yo. You've only seen probably fifteen, twenty percent of his what he could really do. What he could really do. You didn't see his full potential, like, but like I said, that's why because he's not a, he's not meant for WWE. Vince has nothing for him, and he never will. He does. He's not a guy that Vince pans for. And you're right, JD. You're right. Dolph is the gatekeeper. He is that guy yes, that does, does the same shit. He is the same way. Yeah. Do you not see how great he did on commentary this week? He's a great adapter. He could do anything. No, he but I'm talking. We were talking about the, 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 the if you if you want to go to the, the next big deal, level, you, you gotta go him. through Dolph first. Yes, and he knows Dolph that. is the gatekeeper. Why do you think Dolph's so comfortable? Exactly. Why do you yeah. think Cesaro so comfortable? Cesaro's in that realm too. Ah, that's another one. Shit, that fucking kills I me. I love that. Cesaro, but Cesaro shit is very underutilized. I know, but he is in that realm too, where yeah. like a lot of the people who want to get over go into feuds with Cesaro and Sheamus. Like just Cesaro, Sheamus, those kind of guys have that car blanche, I guess, whatever you want to call it, to sit back and then get into these feuds with these guys they want to put over and say, I'm the test. If you want to get over, you gotta go past me. Uh by the way, where's Daniel Bryan? Not underutilized. I'm just asking. Just nah, Daniel, I think Daniel's he's taking care of his new yeah. baby. Yeah, he's in the back. He, he's taking care of his new baby too. Yeah, uh, no, no, but he's he's uh, what you call it. Um, he's he's part of the the the, the agents now. Yes, he is. He's a, oh, who's another one underutilized. Uh, we'll go with um Alistair Black. I think there's hope. I think they're doing better than him now. No, I, I I really don't think so. I really think that um with Alistair Black, he's another kind of gatekeeper guy. But also already guy, though no no yes and but not only that he's also a guy that mid card and possible uh, main event guy could be fucking super over guy I, I mean come on the look I, I'm not even talking about the snake Pliskin bullshit it's fucking solid snake shit I'm not talking about that right just about him in general is a talent that's very easily gravitational it, it's ridiculous that they use him weirdly it's it just I, I i don't i don't i don't understand why wwe doesn't see talent when it's there and and he's another guy that um isaac has put me onto when he was tommy n that was great awesome great guy yeah tommy i, me- I remember when he debuted in nxt uk's debut and he fought um i think he fought like cesaro or some shit like that was, andrade uh, oh what very the underutilized fuck? that dude could easily be your your top your top heel in on Raw uh, and it would work. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I know. He's the, and I hate to say the next, but he's like he's a, he's a, he's himself. But like, 
The dude is like Eddie, him and him and Angel Garza are are stars, and they are gems solo. And and Angel Garza, it will come for him. But I think it's time for Andrade to become a heel, the, the crazy, top heel. The crazy thing with that is that they always talk about, well, he can't speak English, and he needs to give. You know what I need? I need a guy that just comes in and just beats the shit out of somebody and just leaves. I'm so sick of that excuse because you have Asuka as your champion. She can't speak a lick of English. But, but, but not only that is that no. sometimes you don't need to talk. Just go in there, fuck somebody up, and fucking leave. Yeah. You don't need to do it. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Who says you need to talk, eh? Eh? You don't need to speak. But we we also look at the utilize, unutilized talent to where you look at the um, guys who were were dealt with on Black Wednesday who went to other promotions and such. You get like yeah, the Impact guys or whatever. Is it working for them there? No. <laughs> no. Let's say like the like the Good Brothers. Is it working no. for them there? No, they're irrelevant, and they're gone. And they they have not made a splash in at all for me. So badly that they're, they 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 just announced a Talking Shop of Mania two, where they're doing them facing each other again for a ball for a ball match. So they're making fun of the eye for an eye match. Now they're doing a testicle for a testicle match. That's oh, where they okay. are at. After. It might be it might be funny as hell, but but they went from WWE to that. Um, um, Kurt Hawkins, I'm sorry, your gimmick and impact is not gonna get over. Um, Eric Young's impact champion, I guess that's good for him. Uh, I guess. Oh, um, uh, EC3. EC3 is gonna do great, he, but that's that's EC3. Um, they're, 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 it depends on how you run with it. Like some of these guys are making the best of it. Which, by the way, Aiden English is upset that he hasn't got one call from a major company yet. I'm sorry to bring that news to you. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, Aiden English. I don't. I don't see why you would get upset by that because I wouldn't call you either. No offense, but uh, I miss Walter. I, I, you know, I, I miss my big man, Juicy Walter. Oh, but but but, but the new UK thing that's happening. That, that, I'm I'm actually excited for that. If you I am got, too. It just happened this week, guys. We will do a review of on it next week. I love the Heritage Cup and all that shit. I'm a fan of it. If you guys don't know about, it, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that shit. But other than that. Um, you got to take into consideration your your favorite wrestler is not gonna be fucking over because either they don't pull it or it's gonna be it's gonna be a time taking issue, or in reality is that maybe they're suitable or fixed for something else. And when their role comes, it'll come. Like, like for instance, Sheldon Benjamin. We were craving Sheldon Benjamin to be on TV for years, at least eight years. Now he's in the Hurt Business every week making an impact. It comes when it comes. Uh, be patient. That's what I'll tell you guys. Be patient. And, and also remember, these motherfuckers, are make, a lot of these guys are making six figures. So, like, they're chilling. When they get to six figures, they're like, whatever. Just give me a check. We're good. I'll, uh, I'll give you a few the names. Only, the only really – the only ones that really take in consideration – their craft and really give a fuck about how they're looked upon all the real individuals that that love the business and want to see more from it yeah a lot of them listen a lot of them once they see the money like who the fuck will really want to sign with wwe knowing that you're not going to be fucking looked at for anything if you sign the WWE contract nowadays, it's because you want the c- content you money. You want the money. And you have a family, which I don't. I'm not mad at. Which I'm not mad at. I'm not mad at. You got you got you, a kid to going, feed. You got to do it. You're going from making chicken feed to fucking filet mignon. Yeah. Why do you think? Why do you think Kevin what? Owens is content where he's at? He yeah. has a kid to take care of. And, he's fine. He right now he could talk shit because he could be like, "Yo, I made the money. Now nah, fuck that. Make me a big guy." Yeah. But it's still like, listen, I was I was making fucking uh, rice cakes and fucking and, and, and beef jerky. Now I'm 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 getting the I'm getting Caviar. lobster I'm getting lobster right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a few names before we close it off. <laughs> sure. And I want you to tell me if they're underutilized or not. Mm-hmm. We'll start off with Drew Gulak. Uh, he's okay right now. I don't see him going anywhere bigger, but I think he's a he's a good guy right now. He should have been in NXT. It'd have been great if he was in NXT to go. He'd have had great matches with um, um with Thatcher right now. Kushida. Uh, he's good. He fucking, he's happy. He got that. Uh, but underutilized, is he? Um, yes, but I think he's comfortable with being under, underutilized. He's all right with that. Mustafa Ali. Um, making good money. And he's going to be one of those that says, if you're not using me, I got to go. Okay. 
uh, which I could, could totally agree with. Up next we have, <clears throat> sorry. Up next we have um, Robert Rude, and I'm talking about before COVID. Um, very much underutilized. That that's main event. Do guy you think right Glorious there. Bobby Rude needs to come back? Everything of Bobby Rude needs to come back. Main event guy. Um, that's okay. not a mid. That's a mid, That's not a mid card guy. That's a main event guy. Really? And yeah. do you, now that James Storm is a free agent, doing beer money can make a comeback from somewhere. Uh, if they do that, it's because they're going to piggyback off of the Miz and Morrison thing. Yeah. Which wouldn't be wouldn't be a, a bad thing to see them go head-to-head. I in, love in it. WWE, yeah. Shorty G. Very much underutilized, but what more can you do with him? I, I mean, <laughs> Agreed. They're, 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 he's, a, he's a guy that I say he should go back to NXT or something like that. Tony Chimmel. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tony Nice. He's okay. He's making good money. He's fine with where he's at. All right, just a few more before we close it up. I, 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 I'm Until gonna... AEW does a fucking cruiserweight division, um, guys like him well, are okay. Jungle Boy. Should he break out of the Jurassic Express? Is it his time to be his own? Not yet, but it's coming. It's, Soon? Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. He, he's he's got to be a mid-card guy, very much so. But... Uh, He's one of, he's gonna build himself to be one of those um, gatekeeper kind of guys too. We, we I we, like that I like that terminology, the we, gatekeeper guy. We saw this on Raw a little a tease. This should we be seeing? Should we be seeing more of Zelina Vega as a wrestler? Yes, has but she not, been wasting her talent? Yes, but not. But we've seen her before. She's actually she's worked. She's been an impact. She's she's actually a decent worker. That's what I'm saying. Uh, wasting her talent she being a manager trained, over here. She was trained by her cousin, amazing amazing red. She actually can work, but um. The way that they introduced her, no, it shouldn't have been that way. No, um, just a few, two or three AEW guys. I just want to point out, um, and, and Heli go, um, Hybrid Two went on Twitter, but I want to point this out before you give me an answer. Hybrid Two went on Twitter because a lot of people were saying that they weren't being treated right, but they even confirmed they're like, "Yo, guys, we were out of shape during COVID, out of shape we- and injured." Exactly, but so they're not blaming. AEW for not being used, but do, what do you think they should be um, in the tag division? Do you no, think they're, they're being they're, underutilized? They're good right now. I, I see that it's going to be a switch because uh, they're going to have to start pumping up their taxing division a little bit more. As you, you'll probably see in the next couple of months to where that that team is going to be higher up in the rankings. Kip Sabian. Um, I, I, I liked him, but I didn't really don't see anything big with him. And finally, your favorite, Michael Nakazawa. <laughs> All right, we're gonna about to wrap this up, guys, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we before we leave, make sure you check us out. No, 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 seriously, 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 stop. What? Sean Spears is the last one. Oh, Sean Spears. Um, I think he's being underused, and I think he should be with. If Tully Blanchard's were managing FTR, they should be a stable. For now, no, until it, the four horsemen. He's gonna come. be the one they're gonna beat the shit out of, and he, he's gonna end up lining up with Cody. Sean Spears. Yeah. Okay, I can see. I that. have one of those things to where. They're gonna turn on him, and he's gonna line up with Cody. And they're gonna be four horsemen. As, no, as friends again, and that's where the four horsemen are gonna be at. I'm okay with that. It'll be Cody, uh, Sean Spears, and um, uh, I was uh, thinking FTR would join them, but I guess no, you, but based no, on what no, you're it's, saying, it's gonna be you don't really need them. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be something different. But um, other than that, <coughs> guys, thanks for being a part of this week's uh, Facebook live stream. Um, just make sure that you you understand that there's more to the show. Yeah, not the Facebook live stream. There's more. It's, it's more. And plus, with the new equipment, we sound awesome. We do. So, guys, make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets and all the uh, podcasting outlets. And thank you for being a part of our live stream. And make sure you download all the uh, episodes or just 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 be a part of the shit, man. And on Patreon at. Patreon.com forward slash Trumpical Tabloid. Be a part of it because there's going to be more tiers that's going up. So you guys to be a part of and uh, just 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 share and just you know what? Check you guys in a second. We're going to be doing more and more. We have a uh, wrestling rundown on the episode. Download the episode and you'll hear the rest of it. So check you guys in a sec. Laters. What's going on everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olsky from Trumpical Tabloid, but when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, the Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram live sales, raffles, 
and just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So, guys, check out the Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. Rundown as always, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of those. Um, this week, are we are we filled with news this week? Oh uh, yeah, we have some news for sure. Uh, I know on my end is crazy. I have some interesting things. Do you? To, uh, yeah, you I have some I, things. I, yeah, I have some things to talk about. Definitely. All right. So as always, I am the hobo starter this segment to my Robin Ophelia Kwiatkowski and the arty of the segment right now is Isaac. So you, yep. Oski. Take it away! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the first piece of news we have here is that it appears that Jeff Cobb has signed an exclusive deal with New <gasps> Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, Jeff Cobb, after being interviewed in the past couple of weeks, saying that it's actually he's confused as to why he hasn't been signed exclusively elsewhere. Um, this has decided to go to New Japan for the foreseeable future. What do you guys think of um, a young man like Jeff Cobb taking his talents to uh, to Japan for, during this time in his career? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really think he's that good. I think Ooh. he's. I think I think, Jay with the hot take. Yeah, I think I think the the with the whole Hawaiian Samoan feel is probably getting washed down by a lot of these guys. Sure. And, and um. He's a strong dude. He's the monster guy, but I don't really see... J- Japan might make him a badass, though. But he was there before. Mexico loves him, too. Yeah, Mexico loves him. I think that's probably where he would have been f- uh, uh, a bigger star. Maybe he could be in the Bull Club? Yeah, I don't. I think he's got to be a big deal. Uh, I don't know. I don't I really... So. I don't it's really... early. It's, it's early. But yeah, yeah, I don't really see it. Like, I, w- I don't know why he... Out of all the options right now, why that? Maybe the money's there. Who knows? Like, I think he realized that... Um, Japan's a great way to tune your skills. A, a lot of people, a lot of stars come out of New Japan. Lance Archer went to Japan and became a fucking star. You know, uh, there's, there's. Uh, yeah, but what I happens think, when they come back? It's up to them to make decide. I mean, they can make, they, they, they can make, they can make really a, not. But he, he's one of those people who needs a Taz. Taz would be a good manager for him. <sighs> I think he, I think he fits Taz more than Brian Cage, to be honest. Probably, In probably. My, honestly, I mean, maybe. I'll fight him. This week we had a, a trailer for The Mandalorian Season 2 and Sasha Banks is in it as a Jedi. Uh, although, no, it's not It's not disclosed that she's a no, Jedi. No, it's a... It's, it's not it's, disclosed oh, she's whatever, a Jedi. Whatever. She could just be in a cloak. Let's no, it. because in the trailer it has a voiceover of the person telling Mandalorian that they, she needs to find a Jedi in the, um, in the area and... I yeah. hope they swerve the shit out of you. Yeah, I well, really you know do. what? You just don't want to fucking do. whatever. But Sasha Banks has been featured in The Mandalorian Season 2 as supposedly an important character of the show. I she hope you swerve. That bread. Well, I'm, I'm, Two I'm, questions. Um, is this the perfect time to push Sasha Banks due to this? And second question, do you think she's the WWE's next Hollywood star? Do you think that clearly, clearly she has good acting skills if The Mandalorian signed her? What the fuck would I know? I've never seen her act in shit. But, see, but none of us know. But 
if the Mandalorian Disney trusted her with a proper uh, important role, you gotta. She just got clout. Hey, that's all it is. Uh, listen, you're gonna be a little positive is. here, guys. You're fucking morons. <laughs> let's see how let's see how good she does. What if she's the complete shits? Then what? What are well, you gonna but, say? But, but, it was fucking but, the best does movie this, ever. Does this make her more um, valuable for uh, for? What does this mean to Sasha Banks? Because people are saying this is gonna make a big deal for her. Man. Yeah, because and, and they're I'm, saying I'm waiting for her to fucking. Act beside no, no. They're saying Meryl Street. they're saying that the timing is weird. How people are expecting her to take the belt off Bailey eventually, and now she's a a proper role in the Mandalorian. Wow, you know what's crazy is that Disney actually needs that because they need that boost. I'm not talking about Disney's perspective. Who I'm talking about cares? WWE's perspective and no. her personally. I I, I, I don't, I don't well, see any relevance. I to just this. don't. I don't think she's a fucking good actor, man. I don't see any of it. I'm really I'm, listen, any look sense. at me, man. I think people, it's cool I'm, as I'm, fuck, I'm, though. I mean, yo, I, yeah, I think people, it's cool. Straight shooting, okay. Fate. People just think that it's a it's a perfect timing idea if you put the belt on Sasha while this whole the promotion of the Mandalorian season two comes out. Because no, it it doesn't. It just listen. At the end of the day, <laughs> I gotta watch what I say about Sasha before I get Sammy Guevara. <laughs> but I mean, oh, honestly, geez. let's look at it like this. It doesn't benefit any one of them. It doesn't. It, it really doesn't. She's just okay. She's just a cool piece of the, of the show. It's all, it's all right. It, whatever. It's like Ronda Rousey in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like whatever. It doesn't uh-huh. make any difference. Which, by the way, why does um Sami Zayn look like the chef from um, Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> like what? On AEW Dynamite this week, Thunder Rosa and Eva Thunder Lise Rosa! ended up getting more real than planned when they worked a match on this past week's show. AEW booked the two stars in a match with the NWA Women's Title on the line, and Eva Lise was caught no selling some of the major spots during the match. Fightful Select reported this on um, Thursday that Rosa did not appreciate the actions of Eva Lise, and a real and real strikes were exchanged. Yikes. The talk among the wrestlers in the locker room was said that two stars have been having issues before the show, hence not getting along before their match. And that once um, Thunder Rosa found, um, realized that Evie Lee was no selling her shit, she started throwing stiffies her, stiffs her way. So, so, so. Now, as, as you're watching this, do you realize that that's happening? As, I wasn't from getting a fans to the match. I was so focused on PS5 that like, I oh, literally, well, I'll be honest with you. Apparently, pre-sale, apparently no joke. It, was, it was on pre-recorded, so they did a lot of editing to the match. Yep, which Thunder Rosa apologized to Tony Khan saying, I'm sorry you have to edit a lot about it. But the other thing is that... Um, oh, yeah, Guys, before you before you come out, I do want to point out that AW officials and talent told the media, and um, Rosa even came out and said it herself that the only reason why she sit as hard as she did was because she wanted to put, she wanted to represent NWA. And the championship with respect and dignity, and she, that it wasn't her defending herself. She said it was her defending NWA. No, that's heat. That's, 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 no, no, she's mad at her, but she said that she, her main grab was the fact that she wanted to make the NWA champion listen, look weak. The only thing that I can say is that I'm not gonna take anything away from both these women. They're, they're, they're both tough chicks. Eva Lee's has been in the grind for years. She already know what it is. I know she's been. In matches where she had to been, especially in like Mexico and all that shit, she knows that whole shoot shit. Uh, Thunder Rosa, she's been in the business for whatever, but Eva Lee's better watch it because Thunder Rosa trains in MMA. Yeah, she's, she one, does. she's like the best, right? Yeah, now. so it's like. She'll fuck you up real quick. Yeah. yeah, so it's like. She know what it is to take some stiff shit. Absolutely, but like uh, on dick. TV, you know, I've all, you know. <laughs> His AW's trying to sound a lot like WCW 2001, man. All these fucking accidents um, happening with all this shit. Nah, yeah, yeah, listen. <laughs> Hiccups shit, happen. Shit happens. I, I think it's unprofessional. It really is. Uh, but other than that, it's like, look, you know, it happens. And you got to see what what unfolds afterwards. And that next week, they have a, a tag team match. And, um, yeah, they, they got to know where the money's at. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Jackson Riker has gotten into deep trouble once again for going on social media and talking shit about Matt wearing a mask. 
uh, Jackson Riker, the same person who talked about supporting Trump and all his political beliefs, has gone on Twitter to say uh, he he um, he posted a pic, um, he posted a picture of people not wearing a mask at an airport, and he said, "LMFAO, this made my day. Lay down your freedom, brother. Raise those max that don't do one damn thing for yourself. They're just a waste of time and money." After he took his team off television from saying some stupid shit already. Uh, Zooey. Is, is this where we go on our fucking government rant right now? Yeah, sure. You go first. Uh, unfu- uh, how stupid <laughs> can you fucking be? Jackson Riker is no better. Jackson Riker is no better than the uh, anti-maskers who at the Target who did the fucking parade in Florida, which I wish all of them get COVID. You're you please, already please go since we are on all, this, so we didn't do an open assault. Yeah, this is your you are uh, you know everyone who's following this no mask shit. This this I'm not wearing a mask. Which all you people down in Florida who did that parade, I just I hope you all get COVID. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, did you not see the video? People went into Target, Isaac, yeah. in a march saying, "Take your masks off." I hope you all get COVID. All of you. <laughs> and Jackson Riker, I'm not even talking on a political side here as a professional. Now you fucked over your team twice. <laughs> you not only took them off TV because of your Trump comments, now you're talking about masks. You stupid fucking idiot. All, and, and, and I'm sorry, Florida and all you um, Trump-supporting states, but you need to wear a mask. Okay? It's a condom for your fucking face. And everyone, and everyone who's, and everyone, and, every, and, and no, 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 I'm dead ass. And everyone, and the same people, Red's dead. and the same people who support this no mask wearing shit should be along with Jackson Stat Riker Williams on the shit. unemployment line. It's that shit you see where you get a cup of coffee, a cup of Joe mask. Yo, you know what's crazy? Is that it's bullshit. I yo, everybody that I've seen that we are one. We're everywhere, and like <laughs> yo, everywhere I go to, people are wearing masks. Yeah. The only motherfuckers that don't wear a mask is you guys, you yeah. younger guys. Yeah, yeah, because they, they, they don't care. They don't care. Yo, I was in Crown the other day. I went, I put my order in, I go pick it up. It's like two motherfuckers sitting there with three hundred dollar fucking sneakers, no and mask, fucking, right? And, and a, a two hundred dollar t shirt with no mask. I tell the fucking guy at the store, I say, yo, the fuck are you doing, B? Yeah, they want How? that, and, that and money. I say, yo. Your, your, your sign on the door says no mask, yeah. no service. Look at a lot of trouble. stores like that. They're in trouble right now. He said, yeah. oh, they don't listen. I said, you pussy, son. I said, give my food, son. You mad pussy. Give my food, man. Yeah, no. And, Fuck and God, man. man. And she took the yeah. food from yeah. me. Yeah. Give no. my food, man. I wouldn't have... Sub- I, if I didn't order, I wouldn't have supported them. Because I'd be like, yo, you're slacking right now. You like Crown. I love Crown. I miss Crown. <laughs> I love Crown. <laughs> I just got chocolate shake later. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, no, I, you know, I, I, but yes. Jackson Riker fucked up again, Red. This is twice <laughs> politically... Make your own personal private account. Listen, I've, I've, I've come to the realization that fun. you fucking Trump supporters, you are the same people that when sniff you glue. Grow, you, when you were growing up, you used to bite people. Yeah, yeah, love to. Yeah, when anybody would, would <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even fight for it. The first thing you did was bite. <laughs> It was like, come on, we're gonna test this. Hey, hey, you pull your teeth out. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, all right, I'm not playing with you no more. You like to bite. I ain't playing with you no more. <laughs> they you ever met those they kids? Pull up, they pull up yeah. like, hey, hey. Like, nieces and nephews are your cousins. You wanna play with them? And the first thing they wanna do is bite yep. you. It's like, all right, I ain't fucking like, I'm not fucking with you. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, this ain't a fight for me. Yeah. That's all you Trump That's supporters. That's all you Trump supporters are. <laughs> and a bunch of y'all, the, the first thing y'all do is when you back them in the corner of the bullshit. That is being told. The first thing you you, you do, mama jokes. It's the first thing. Like, well, your mother got a little dick. It's like, wait, what? what? Your mom's supposed to fashion the menu. I'm like, what? Why are you talking about my, my mother? Don't have a dick. How that happen? How the fuck you? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, crazy. <laughs> I just, I just think that Jackson Riker's stupid again. I think uh, he ruined his team again, and he's Vince's wet dream, so he ain't gonna fire him. But. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, because he's like a fire because Vince is a Trump supporter. Yeah, though. yeah, he's his best friend. <laughs> he's just doing dumb shit. Like, he's no, all right. He's a fucking asshole. But no, seriously, listen. Jackson, really? Well, let me just put it out there for you guys. This, this is the platform for the political moment for, for this episode. Um, don't waste your vote on the 
uh, on the independent Captain Crunch, Bernie Sanders, <laughs> Harambe, Donkey Kong. Uh, no. yeah. oh, oh. Harambe was, uh, oh, Harambe was a good got, close one. Oh, Harambe yeah. got 25,000 votes. Bro, Harambe, I think Harambe, Harambe beat Bernie last bro, time. Bro, Harambe was ranked third in votes on the fr- last if election. You vote, if you vote Harambe <laughs> over... <laughs> you imagine? Vote, then Our then country vote. has gotten so stupid that they vote for a <laughs> dead gorilla? Number no, no, one, Donald Trump. A dead, dead gorilla. A dead Harambe. gorilla. That's it. A dead gorilla. If you're gonna do that <laughs> shit, if you're gonna do that, honestly, I'm listen. Don't don't vote. Yo, you, you, this you gorilla know? did nothing for these people. Don't do <laughs> this. Yo, and they voted for a <laughs> dead fucking, gorilla. Son. They get the most clout right now. It's like what? Harambe is in fucking animal heaven going, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fuck with y'all. Fuck. Like he's Richard I don't Nickus, fuck with y'all. Nixon. Fuck with me. I fuck with y'all. Like I mean, fuck. Come on, come on listen, son. Listen. listen. It, it, if you're gonna <laughs> do some on, shit son. like that, don't vote. Yeah, for no, real. There's no uh, point. Cut it out. Cut that shit out. No one for Mickey Mouse and fucking Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, I laugh because I they, <laughs> um, one of the, the the pages they were talking about um um how how uh pine soul, the Clorox pine soul is known to now uh kill COVID when you clean. Yeah. So I was like, uh listen guys, Trump supporters, hey, listen, pay attention. Um your leader wants you to drink this, so bars open. I got the tap, sir. <laughs> drink up, all of you. Man, baby mucho. Yeah, drink up. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Just when they think they got the answers, I change the questions. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. No. <laughs> Teddy Hart has no! been no! Teddy Hart no! has been no, a... no! Teddy Hart has been arrested again <laughs> in Virginia. I will remember you. Teddy Hart was arrested on September 10th and said the city of Richmond arrest records lists the, the charges as follows. Come on, Teddy. A felony arrest without a warrant. And release on unsecured bonds, a promise to appear. So basically, he broke his fucking last arrest, and the rules of, um, yeah, not being, <laughs> whatever. This year, he was arrested and charged with possession of Schedule Three substance with intent to sell or distribute. <laughs> he was also arrested on March 4th for violating his house arrest, and on March 26th for allegedly assaulting Maria Manic. God damn. He was charged with strangulation, resulting in the wound- <laughs> wounding and bodily Christ. harm. Um, I've been there, Brody. Do we start playing a drinking <laughs> game with Teddy Hart's arrests here? Like, <laughs> yeah. Come on, son. And he's getting arrested on the most stupid shit. shit. He always gets away with it. He couldn't just behave for a month. He always gets away with it. Tomo Cataloy will have an upcoming interview. First interview back. We got to get him back. Oh, man. This dude can't. What would you ask Teddy if he was here? Why? Why, Teddy? Why? What the fuck, Why, Teddy? Why? What the fuck, dude? But it wasn't my fault. Oh, uh, clearly. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, shit. Uh, Teddy, one love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the miss! <laughs> and I'm awesome! Um, a few injury updates as, um... <laughs> Unfortunately, another unfortunately. I'm locked up, won't let me out. <laughs> um, guys, I hate to say it, um, but Ivar from the the Viking Raiders uh, has officially undergone neck surgery, and has been reported that he will be likely out until late 2021. Damn, late. Late 2020. Damn. They're talking about fall 2021. Hmm. That's a year from now. Hmm. Wait a minute. Ivar is the one that he he's he, married to. No. Ivar is the, the one with the beard and the, the, the meat. The other one with the bald head is married to Sarah and Logan. Eric. Eric's married to Sarah Logan. Oh, okay, okay. This, Man, that I, sucks. Because uh, at least he could have been injured. Yeah, and take care of the kid and shit yeah, like yeah. that. But Ivar, no, no. Um, he was the one that had the, um, the, the, the shorty kind of gimmick and all that shit. You know what's crazy? That sucks. I'm a wrestling fan. I don't know. Who the fuck is what? That's ridiculous. It's all good. Those tech teams, it's hard to predict anyway. <laughs> um, unfortunate news there. And then we also have um, Simone Johnson, The Rock's daughter, once again going for her third knee surgery. Do you know who she's going to be? And, I, and when, I, when I read that, I said, that is um, Mick Mysterio. Foley's daughter. Mysterio. Noel? Yeah, that's Noel. Third. Remember when Noel yeah, yeah. wanted to get into wrestling? Yeah, and that she whole got, show. Yeah. She got hurt. 
Um, Simone Johnson, <laughs> third knee surgery, and not of all time. Her third knee surgery from since being in the performance center. Yikes. Wow. Um, BX is going to book her once she's Yo, that, <laughs> hell yeah. Our, well, listen, why not? Once she's healed, BX is going to book her. Un- Can she work? Unbelievable. <laughs> Can she work? Uh, unbelievable. So, guys, um, news. So that's the injury. Prayers up, up, yo. Prayers up. The, yeah, prayers up, son. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Recent photos online have surfaced of Ronda Rousey training with Roddy Piper's legitimate daughter in a wrestling <laughs> ring. <laughs> no, because I, I, no, I have to because some people think Ronda daughter. Rousey is her his daughter. Huh? I have to because people oh, in the okay, comments have okay. commented thinking that Ronda Rousey is Roddy Piper's legit daughter. Right, really? And they're, they're slow. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Ronda Rousey... <laughs> <laughs> I, I should put that on the button. Like, Amazing. Amazing. Um, Ronda I Rousey also coming on multiple interviews saying that she she looks she's looking forward to a couple of rematches in WWE. So it all leaks turn to maybe one more year of Ronda Rousey in WWE. What, what? Raise your hand if you care. Hey, exactly. No, come <laughs> on, you got even more than that. What are your thoughts on Ronda? Just like for just um, even knowing she's coming back, I don't care either. I don't care. I really don't. I don't care either. I don't care. Well, then we could move on. <laughs> I mean, I, you know I, what? I know. You just made the list. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Ross commented on. Um, actually, no, we would do that last week. I'm. I, I think I'm done. Do you have anything really? else? Yo. <laughs> Yo, which by the way, Jim Ross on fucking commentary on oh, AEW. Sorry, I have news. Yeah. Um, WWE has signed former women's champion Melina from NWA. Wait, who signed her? WWE. Why? I guess they need veteran women in the in on the on the roster. They want another drunk on the fucking. <laughs> I guess, sure. I mean, you ever heard the Olsky the Olsky story of meeting Melina? I met Melina at um, Outlaw Wrestling. She was near the bar at the end of the show, uh, drinking, and I went up to her to ask her for an interview, and she gave me a 35-minute conversation about why she's <laughs> wow. important. Oh, my gosh. She but was, yet, like, didn't book her. to Matt. But yet, did, wait, I didn't get her. I didn't book her. I interviewed her, like, in person. You should have had a recording <laughs> on you. Dude, I asked, her, I asked her to come on the show, and she was like, I would love to, but they all call me whore, a whore. <laughs> She go, yo, she, yo, she told me she was like, she was in her bag. She was like, I swear I didn't have sex with that Batista. Was the night, remember what? That night, remember the night we went? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yo, everyone was lit that night. I was yo, selling, girls were taking off their shirts. Yeah, in the exactly, crowd, bro. I was selling them. I was selling Matt. I said, Yo, Matt. Matt. Yo, we gotta get, we gotta get. I'm gonna get, show there. We gotta get. Stop. I said we gotta get Molina, and he's like, Okay. I said, Go get her. He's like, Uh, uh no. Fuck that. I'm tired of fucking me always doing this. You go get her. Yeah. <laughs> He was there for like 35 minutes. Were you minutes. tight when she was like grieving to you and venting her whole I was laughing because she was like, yo, I swear I didn't have sex with Batista. I swear. You and should I'm have like, asked her out on a date. It sounded like Matt she was like, what? She hugged me. She hugged me. She hugged me. She hugged me four times. Yeah. yeah she, she, was, like, she was like, thank you she for listening. She Adele. You could admit it. I don't fucking. She was like, thank you for listening. She told thank me for like listening. 35 minutes. But Melina, Melina, my, my boo. But you didn't book her. I couldn't. She said no. $200 fee. I asked her again at the end. She goes, I know. She goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, Melina signed by WWE again Where do you think That she'll be better Helping some of these Young women She's not a fucking wrestler She's horrible She's gotta be the commentator Oh yeah, Everyone's there for her ass Why? For that, that split unless she, unless she comes in As a manager Or like a the Splits the money bring, bring, bring Eminem back All we need yeah, is Mercury yeah, Something son. like that Yeah She can hey, be on screen That's she probably has, what it is That's all she need to do Anything else? Um, Great person WWE 2K Battlegrounds came out today, and the reviews are horrendous. Really? <laughs> did you play it yet? I did not. Me and Red were actually going to go 2020 20 on it. Chris Martin loves it, which is probably not saying much. That's not saying anything. That's not saying much. Uh, no offense. Uh, but Who the fuck is no, I say it, no, it is offensive. The reviews are in, and uh, just a few notes here to what I've, what I've been told based on reviews on YouTube. Uh, the gameplay is fun and addicting. Mm-hmm. Um... There are micro there are microtransactions are in the game, which means you need to buy your the, the, the wrestlers. Nah, son. The the story mode, there's no cutscenes in the story mode, it's all comic book strips. 
yo, yo. And the yeah, game, I, I, and, the ga- and, 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 the, and the gameplay is rumored to be very boring after a while. Um, you know, uh, a fun arcade it's a little game, kid game, bro. a fun arcade game. People say that it's fun, like you could probably get zooted and play it. You know but what, man? Um, nah, I'm, I'll shoot on this since it's a video game topic, man. I think they're not putting enough effort in these fucking wrestling games now. No, but we knew already because this was this, 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 this is their filler. With the travesty. Don't we're even put a game up. out. That shit was AIDS, and you gotta release yeah. AIDS. Come on, man. But I am excited about to see what was gonna happen with AEW's game. Hell yeah! And the other new one, underground, um, the basement, whatever, underground basement or some shit like that. Uh, oh, the one that they have the um, the indie guys yeah, on it. Yep. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking for that one too. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that. But um, Red, uh, what are your thoughts on Battlegrounds and like why? Do you want to tell the people why we decided not to buy it? Well, it what once the micro transaction the transaction shit. Bro, in. you have to buy packs to unlock characters. I don't think so. I think you have to grind. No, it's it's two, both ways. You yeah, can yeah, either yeah. grind or pay. Um, but the grind is ridiculous. Yeah, but it's uh, twenty four uh, hours to beat Hulk Hogan, <laughs> to get Hulk fuck Hogan. Fuck that. But I, I, like I said, I, um, I, I want to see how it plays out. I do. I want to see how it plays out. I'm not gonna buy it now. I'll wait till the shit drops to twenty. Come on, my love. This is gonna be on Black Friday for twenty dollars. Well, Probably yeah, exactly. Early, early. But uh, it looks like a fun game to play. Like if we were sitting there fucking around. Yeah, it zooted cool. and shit. All right. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Um. Lana goes on Twitter and says that if if, if people continue to cyber bully her, her and her husband Miro will be off social media you completely. You know what? That's first of all, that's bullshit. And because Miro's they need social making media. the bread. Yeah, they need social media. That's and bullshit. And secondly, you know what? Like we always say on the show. If you can't handle social media, get off. Don't be on social media. Yeah, agreed. She th- and by the way, how are you threatening your boy- husband's social media account on Listen, social media? Get me, the fuck let, out of let here. Let me say Have you ever heard me on social media complain about me being depressed? No, never. Or me being upset about our show not getting the 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 views it should or to listen to? No. Have you done that? No. So why the fuck are you really kowtowing and believing that you doing that is going to get you more love? I don't get that. That actually makes you look sad and desperate. Uh, it, 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 and I don't like the fact that she was like, me and my husband, Miro's social media accounts will be deleted. I'm like, um, don't speak yeah, for Miro's me. Yeah, like, oh, wait, hold on. Don't, don't, don't speak for don't, me. Don't speak for me, bitch. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't speak for me. Um, Moro Ronaldo. You know what I'm getting for that shit? Moro Ronaldo said, um, did it did what we said to do. If you have, if you have mental health problems, I'm not mad at you for that. I'm not sad at you for that. But if you can't handle social media, don't do it. That's like me having an allergy to pineapples and I'm eating pineapples. No, yeah. don't do it to yourself, then. Makes no get sense. off. It Just really get doesn't off. make any sense. I don't understand this shit. Because Just get off. Because people are, are gonna be haters everywhere you if go. You're, if you're a professional, Timmy Thatcher doesn't have anything. Yeah, if you're a professional, exactly. no, he's gonna need it. But if it's you're prof- if you're a professional, and you can't handle people. the repercussions, give it to pay somebody to deal with it. Yeah, that's it. Have a bot. You think Undertaker? You think Vince? By the way, I hate to break the news to you, everyone. You think Vince McMahon controls his Twitter? Hell no. No. So yeah, uh, that's it for me. To well, say happy birthday to people. That's not him. It's someone else. Um. Uh, anything else? Nope. I'm good. Okay. Booker T has said he had COVID. I no. Said, yeah. In June. Oh. Yeah. And he was all around motherfuckers and everything. Great. Yeah, but he didn't know what he said was what happened. Was that he went and got tested, and they 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 said it was negative, and then recently the CDC sent him a message saying that he had it. Months the time. later, thanks, and dickhead. He didn't, and he didn't have any uh, any uh, uh, um, fucking what you call it the um, um, effects from it. So he didn't know what what I mean. What can you say? Nothing. You it's like with me when they told me that. I had uh, the antibodies, and it could be that I was positive. Like, I, I didn't fucking feel it. You don't know. So, you don't know. Uh, um, Scary. Jessamine uh, Duke had a topless pick. Oh, I saw that. Oh, I hello, saw that. Dear. And it was not attractive at all. <laughs> I felt like it was a guy with man tits. <laughs> Moves. Is she not bad looking? Huh? Yes. Is I think she? she. I think. I, I think she looks like Jack. Is... She looks like Jack. Jack Skellington on crack. Jessamyn Duke. She was part of um um um. Shayna Baszler's group. Shayna Baszler's group. If Jack Skellington had sex with cat with crack, that would be her. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, bad. S- Sami Zayn, the national anthem comment. We wanted to talk about it yes, quick. Yes, we did. Uh, um, honestly, I get what he was saying with the whole idea. It was like, if you don't want politics and sports, then don't do the national anthem. I don't think the national anthem is politics. I don't. I don't. No, it's not. I don't see it. I that get way. his point though, but I don't get it to that extent. It, yeah, it, it was kind of reach. It was kind of a reach. But Sami Zayn is not from America, so I don't think he takes the national anthem and stuff like that as Oof. serious. He's not from America. He he he. he uh, it, you know, um, I get his point, but I think that the national anthem is more than just politics. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it, I think it was a stretch, but I get him, though. I'm not mad at his comment. Right, right, right. I, I understand what he was coming from with it. There, there's, But he needs to be very careful with that because... It could be a little um, touchy. Yeah, it could be. It, like I said. And um, we, we we talked about WWE Battlegrounds. Yep. Great. Uh, there's a possible lawsuit with that. Oh, yeah. Tessa Blanchard. Um, Not even her. Multiple. It's, the photographer. Yeah, they. Yeah, absolutely. How are they gonna use? Uh, so apparently, in the game, one of the cutscenes is a image not directly to it, not the actual image, but it's gra- uh, graphically it's changed up, but it's of Tessa Blanchard with her iconic yeah, her pose. Iconic pose, yeah. Which is and clear. It's not even a thing where it's like you think it's Tessa Blanchard. You know it's Tessa Blanchard. Yeah, so. It's Tessa Blanchard. A hundred percent. Is that a hint that she was signed? Huh? No, I think no, it was it's a some fact. sucker shit. I think no. I think it's a fact that one of the programmers went and typed in and said, uh, "Girl w- posing." WWE wrestler winning. Oh <laughs> shit! And they put women her. wrestler posing. Oh, who's this? She's a nobody. So the photographer from uh, Impact who takes the pics was like, hey, uh, where's my credit and my money for this? Yeah, yeah, where's my bread at for So uh, we could see that the next firmware update is going to be Not that anymore. Getting that shit out. That will be gone. It's, WWE, it's all about common sense. So other than that, uh, I think we're done here. We are, we are. Tapping out. So, guys, we have Around the Square Circle coming up, and as well as uh, conversations, maybe if it happens. Maybe. We'll Depending see. Because we do it on the fly. So, guys, stick around. We'll be back. Check it out, guys, in a sec. What's going on, everybody? As you know, this is Matt Olski from Termical Tabloid, but when I'm not here talking wrestling, uh, I have another hobby, which is collecting Funko Pops. So... Uh, if any of you guys want to check out my new page, the Funko Hub on Instagram, we promote Instagram live sales, raffles, and just talk about anything Funko related, uh, what you're collecting, what I'm collecting, and supporting the community at its finest. So, guys, check out the Funko Hub on Instagram uh, for all your Funko needs and uh, to support the Funko community together. As you can see here at Get Vocal, around the square circle, we got our boy Ben the Brit is in the building. Ben is vibing, and unfortunately, I don't know. I can't. Nothing. We'll do. Don't worry, you were here, Mr. Oski. Yes, sir. All right. Well, you got to get louder because. Uh, I can't hear nah, you. Nah, not louder. I couldn't hear you guys at all. I, that's, that's, I, that was, those were the first words I, I heard come out of your mouth. No, 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 because I was playing music anyway, so I was doing the intro. But any case, as uh, as uh, as we know, Oski is, um, if, the, if you see the picture up, that means he's not in studio, meaning um, he's wanking off somewhere. Uh, only for you guys on my OnlyFans. Yes, thank you for all my OnlyFans. Which, by the way, I'm making an OnlyFans um, for $10. You could watch me watch a full pay-per-view in its entirety. Why? <laughs> Why? Why money. would you do such a thing? I need money. Uh, so yeah, you my whore. only fans is coming up. 
Oh, and for twenty dollars, you could um, you could come with me to a wrestling event, and pay for all my shit. That sounds like a plan. I like that. So House of Glory. I mean, we'll, we'll be set. We got an Uber and everything. This guy. So I like the way you think, sir. You 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 you're on your way, brother. Gotta be positive, right? <laughs> so. Around the Square Circle, uh, as always, here on Get Vocal, and also, since Matt is already uh, throwing out stuff to do, we'll, uh, we'll also have uh, our Patreon at uh, patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We finally caved in and got us up a fucking Patreon. I know we did. If you guys listen to the whole episode, which you should, you'll hear our fucking in- infomercial in the beginning. Uh, so if you want if you want a, a deeper dive at Turnbuckle Tableau, if you want to get in my drawers, Ooh. you know what to do. You know what to do. Get so. in them drawers. So, exactly. You know, you know what to do. Skick it off around the square circle. What did you listen to this week, sir? Um, what did I listen to? I listened to a few interviews with Inside the Ropes uh, while I'm on the track with some Chris Jericho interview, a Dominic Mysterio interview, which, which by the way, Dominic Mysterio is like, he, he even said himself, he was like, I thought that this was a joke. Like, uh, he, he said that he didn't even like know or realize that he was being booked on Raw. Like, he, he was told he was supposed to be in the Performance Center for more than a year. And he just ordered it was a cool story to see, like, how he found out that he was working with Rollins and, and you know, and how he misses Eddie Gore, Eddie, and all that stuff. And he, and believe me, guys, everyone out there who's critiquing his frog splash, Isaac, he even admits it. He goes, Yes, I need to work on my form better, but it, it'll get there. The dude's been fucking training for less than a year in Performance Center. Give him a fucking break. Um, and Jericho, you know, the Jericho interview I listened to, he was basically just defending Orange Cassidy and telling NXT to go to Tuesdays and him being, I love Jericho, but just the weekly round of him kissing his own company's ass. The usual shit. I, I like Inside the Ropes, you know? I mean, I, I don't know what kind of makes them special. Like, I don't see a unique aspect to their show, but... They have the connects, and I think that's all that matters in this business, for real. Uh, this week I was listening. You know what I just realized? As much as I love what culture, I love those mates over there across the pond. Hey, Ben. I, I, only, like ben? The up, I only like the up and down guy. The the thing that the, – the, the thing that – are you talking about Simon Miller? I, 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 I only like him. He's uh, cool. He, uh, Simon is a – I'm sorry, but he, he fucking – he's an ass kisser sometimes. It's just – it's, a, it's nauseating. Everything can't be fucking great at on AEW. I'm sorry. It can't be. Oh, oh I, haven't, I haven't watched his AEW up and downs. Yeah. I, I've only watched his Raw and SmackDown ones. Yeah, they, 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 can't, be, they can't be that fantastic. I, I, I don't get it. Well, he's like Dave Meltzer who gave that shit up, who gave that parking lot brawl five stars. Which, by the way, how fucking lame is that? This fucking guy. Been saying well, it for the a, longest, ladies and gentlemen. Meltzer's he's a, a fucking tool. He's a beef blower. He's a fucking tool, and he wants to get connects. Yeah, um, and I guarantee you, he'll do it when the next company comes up. Like I guarantee you, if Zack Ryder made a wrestling company right now and it was on TV, he'd be giving every single thing a four star. It's not because he likes the matches. It's because he's bu- he's building bridges with new companies. He's a dick sucker. I think it's just atrocious. The man, the man needs something better to do with himself instead of fucking kissing everybody's arse and he schlobs on the knob. Uh, it's ridiculous. So, um. What else did I run through this week? Um, let me go through my notes because you know I do those. I do that lately. I've been taking notes. I feel like such a yeah. fucking grown person. Um, yeah, no, professional out here. How about you? Wasn't really too much uh, that I did around. Um, oh, you, you know you, what? I, you know what I enjoy court? watching? I've been watching um wrestling bios. You ever heard of that on YouTube? No, but I think we've watched that a few times. Yeah, wrestling bios is actually really good. You guys should check him out. He's he's also he's a he's another British guy as well. The guys are pretty good too. Very um, very smart and very um, in tune with with the, the the history of wrestling and shit. The guy's actually really cool. Um, uh, what about Jim Cornette? You listen to him to this week? Uh, corny for you and me. Uh, Cornette had a few uh tag team names that were uh. Did you just move a cat across the fucking screen, Ben? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got she's, ben, a, she's, about, up, ben? she's about getting away, and I didn't think he wanted to see me cats also, so I fucked her up. That's all right. I like to see pussy. That's all right. Um, okay, I just want to make sure to preface to everyone in the line. I can't hear them, so if they try to ask me a question, tell them to ask you, tell you to ask me that. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll work. We'll we, we got to work on on that with the new mixer that we have. So that'll so be uh, something we work on for for Matt on his end. Uh, hey, 
barely at a studio anyway, so this is like a one-time thing. I'm just packing for my trip. Yeah, apparently Oski's going away for for a couple of days, so uh, he's uh, on a gay cruise. Yeah, he's going on his gay cruise. <laughs> yeah, man. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get on this. You need to uh, deep through a couple of things, if you know what I'm saying? The gay cruise. So, um, yeah, no, but uh, we'll figure it out. So, um, yeah, Cornette had a few um, tag team names for Joey Janetta and, and Sonny Kiss, which was Yowzers. Yeah, I was – AJ showed me that, and I was lost for words. I'm like, this is really a thing right now. This is really a thing right now. Um, the Cornhole Express was one of my favorites. <laughs> the Cornhole Express, yeah, that was um, – yeah. And, and not, what, what was what it? What he was like peanut butter and and nut, uh, nut, nut, nut butter and jelly. Nut butter and jelly. That's what it was. Nut butter and jelly. Like what? Is that racist? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to take. <laughs> and, I don't uh, know how to take. Just quickly, the um, uh, uh, for Glory match is set up. Main event is going to be EY Eric Young versus Rich Swan, who makes his return. Apparently, is not going to be retired. So that's a that's a that's the announcement there. And I must compliment. On. Eddie Kingston on All Elite this past week on AEW Dynamite. That fucking Kansas City Royals fucking jersey was fire. Yo, Eddie Kingston got the the, the thrift the thrift that he went he was thrifting boy, with that yeah, mother. I'm telling you, he knows he knows the spots, boy. And like I said, I, I, I want to go thrifting legit one day um, to the good spots, like the retro jerseys and shit like that. I, I'm, I'm 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 envious of his of his clothes for so, sure. So, what do we got in store? What started off on uh, this week? So, Monday Night Raw was a pretty interesting episode. Um, you know, I was supposed to be in the Thunderdome this week three times, and they fucking booked me. They fucking kicked me out three times. You know that they actually sent me an email to sign up? Yeah, they did for me, too. And I was like, really? I was like, you that so thirsty for my attention? Now they're giving people notifications, I guess, to sign up. Because I guess they're, they're not happy with their numbers. Uh, supposedly, people aren't signing up as quickly as they expected them to but right. want to know why because you sign up and you don't get in anyway so right. what the fuck's the point it's exactly. hard. um uh, so i'm gonna have raw this week we had a, a, a plethora of uh, of fun and and, and and greatness here we had drew mcintyre facing keith lee in the main event um again which we'll, which we'll speak about at the end but that was just one of the highlights here um in no particular order I need to start saying that every week because I hate going in order because I can't. None of my none of my sources go in order, so I can't do it. So I'm just gonna go with what I know. So Cedric Alexander and um, the whole um, hurt business happened this week. Uh, hurt business coming out talking shit about uh, why he why 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 did you do this, Cedric Alexander? Why did you turn? Basically saying that. He was done taking beatings. He was over the. He was over over losing. He was oh he won. He wanted a, a better life for his family and uh, you know the basic heel bullshit. Yeah, because his wife is stinking it up over there in all elite, so he got to be the superstar now. Yeah, well, she's. Uh, are you a fan of Big Swole? Uh, not not in, not in all elite right now. She like I said. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. If she changed her name, I would be better on it. But the name is terrible. I'm more on the thing to where it's um. She's one of those that had to go find uh, like the performance center or something because she needed she needs more training. She needs to sharpen it up. Oh, okay, so um, you know what? I actually have um, I think I have an updated list here of like what happened in order. So we're gonna we're gonna get back to that shit in a minute. All right. So to start off the night, we had Michael Cole and Dolph Ziggler on commentary to replace Samoa Joe and Tom Phillips because they're on I guess on a vacation, whatever. Like I'm about to be. Um, Drew McIntyre comes out and starts the night and gives an injury update on himself, saying that the WWE medical personnel told him to take some time off. Which, by the way, Red, what do you think about them doing a terrible job of selling his fractured jaw? It, it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it look worse than just normal of a fractured jaw? Uh, fractured jaw would definitely look uh, would, would worse than more, him looking yeah, normal. Like, like, I, 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 I feel like they, I feel like they could have even bandaged it, like his fucking mouth. Like, like well, it looks nothing. It, you wouldn't even tell that he hurt himself. He hey hurt. Ben, did you ever did you fracture your jaw? Weren't you one of those guys that had one of those multiple injuries in wrestling and stuff playing around? Uh, no, I cr- I've played wrestling, crushed my eye socket, dislocated my shoulder, and broke my nose. That's it. No jaw, no, no jaw pain. No jaw. Yeah, no jaw. He's done everything else but the jaw. This guy's amazing. Well, <laughs> exactly. But um, you know, when it comes to um the um 
that whole jaw cell, I'm not a fan of it. Um, but the one thing I, I found fun, I laughed at this. He said if he takes one more bad hit, he'll need his jaw wired shut. Yeah, oh. right. If, if he took the time off, he would have to forfeit his title. Uh, McIntyre proposes to Randy Orton that they have their title match in an ambulance match after mm. two weeks in a row of them going in ambulances. Uh, Adam Pierce then interrupts and says that Randy Orton may not make the match. So Drew McIntyre and Keith Lee for the main event actually has a bigger stipulation here. If Lee wins, McIntyre will face Keith Lee for the championship. Uh, the two member, two guys shake hands and uh, they pull each other in, blah, 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 blah. We had the Street Profits facing Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura, champion versus champion, uh, Raw SmackDown uh, match this week. And we had um, Angelo Dawkins picking up the win after a cash-out splash and pinning Cesaro. Uh, like I said, Angelo Dawkins, I'm surprised he picked up the pin because he's donezo once fucking Montez Ford gets away from this dude. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quick and, quick and silent, his death. Um, backstage, Lana talks to Angel Garza backstage, saying that she can't believe Mickey James gets the title shot. Um, Angel Garza, of course, flirting with Lana, which, whatever, is Lena Vega and Andrade get pissed off about his lack of support for the team, and we move on to the next segment. Um, like I said, the whole the whole thing with the, the Hurt Business was up next, and Cedric Alexander gave his reasoning. Then we had um, Ricochet and Apollo Crews coming out with Eric of the Viking Raiders, um, and Cedric Alexander beats Ricochet with a lumbar check. After the win, Retribution appear on the screen. And, uh, Red, I want your opinion on this. You could ask Ben as well. Uh, Retribution appears on the screen and talks about how those who give their bodies to this company toss them to the trash and that they're garbage and they will change things in this company for the better, um, saying that they bust their asses for no end result. What do you think about this selling point Retribution is giving here? Ben, you're and a fan of Retribution, Ben? I'll be honest with you. I haven't watched Raw SmackDown for about a month, but... It depends. Like I said, it depends who they are. Like they can say all this shit, but if they're completely pointless people who no one cares about, it don't matter, does it really? So, I'm just. I mean, I think one of them is definitely Dajakovic, which is pretty cool. But it all depends on who they are, to be honest. In my opinion, anyway, they can say all this shit, but if they're just meanless jobbers that no one cares about, then it's not going to work, is it? So, why haven't you been watching Raw SmackDown? Because it, it's always shit. Oh, okay. That'll do it. Yeah, he says it's always shit. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I just, I just sure. catch the highlights sure. on the uh, YouTube. I, I, I can sell with me. But, so, Red, what are your thoughts on the whole retribution selling point? Uh, I'm okay I, with I, it. I mean, I, 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 when guys I, don't. They're basically saying why NXT guys don't want to get called to the main roster. Yeah, I'm just more along the lines to where it's uh, once you find out who exactly who they are, you're gonna go. Oh, uh, I don't think this makes sense. Uh, well, uh, well. You know, I was thinking about it on the track this morning about like how retribution will be because I'm I, I could already guarantee you some of the members. It's Mia Yim, Mercedes Martinez is actually in this thing, which I didn't think it was Mercedes Martinez at first, but then I looked into the eyes and yeah, it's her. Um, Dominic Dijakovic's in there. I think Dio Madden and Shane Thorne. I think that's the group. But what if we find out a superstar on the main roster is going to be the leader? Um, any of those people being the leader, like what it if we would have get, to like, be someone that's not getting any recognition that needs more of a a, a look? Kevin, Kevin Owens, like something like that. You know, I was thinking about it on the. I was thinking about it while I was walking. I was like, Yo, imagine Kevin Owens comes out right, and and he has the Kevin Owens shirt. This is this is this, this is dreaming here, and, and I know we got to keep moving along, but I, I had like a daydream on the track this morning. Imagine Retribution come out and announce their leader like a Brody Lee kind of thing, and Kevin Owens comes out, mm -hmm. and he rips off his shirt, and it's Kill Steen Kill, and he's Kevin Steen again. Like, uh, that shit, that's daydreaming because they can't do that, but imagine, like, he's the heel leader of the group of the people who don't think they, they, they've been, treating right, been treated right in the company. That shit would be over as fuck with me. Uh, that's your fantasy booking, I see. It is, but like I, I, there has to be a leader. People are saying it's the Miz. It's not. It's a raw exclusive program. So I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, maybe it's some, maybe it's someone we haven't seen for a while. You don't know. So Henry is checked in, ladies and gentlemen. Henry is in the building, and it looks like he's in the kitchen. Uh, he's making a panini. Uh, so after the, after the, <laughs> the middle of the angry Puerto Rican. Yeah, yep, so, uh, that's his new gimmick. So after the Retribution promo, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka and Mickie James, which ended in a referee stoppage. A lot of people were wondering what happened with this match, but uh, Mickie James went on inside the ropes and actually confirmed what happened. She actually got her bell rung. She 
her her eyes were dazed. She got she got stiffed on accident, but she was fine. Like she didn't get a concussion. Nothing happened. It was, she was fine. She was just a little, you know, it, it, she got winded. Referee saw her eyes and thought that she could no longer compete. So the referee did what AEW didn't do and took the safe route and stopped the match um, without even thinking about it, which Mickey James said it's unfortunate. You know, it wasn't supposed to happen. She was supposed to actually not tap out. She was supposed to grab the rope there, she said. But uh, the referee thought she was legitimately hurt, which, you know, I, I prefer that and, ref- and referees being a little more safe than not giving a fuck about their workers. But um, after that match, we get a strange um, appearance by Zelina Vega making her way to the ring and telling Asuka she's coming for the title and then delivering a slap. Uh, Red, what are your thoughts on Zelina Vega finally getting the chance I, to wrestle here? I, I'm, I'm, that's one of those, again, one of those things that are just it's fucking confusing. She hasn't wrestled in... Wow. Here, here's the crazy part. Well, mm. think about well, hold it. On, Matt, it Matt, hold on, Matt. Go ahead, Henry. About a couple of weeks ago, didn't she wrestle uh, Bianca Belair and she got pinned? A couple of weeks ago? That thing hasn't been for months that she hasn't well, wrestled. That, yeah. that was. No, she wrestled a few like weeks ago. And then she would... She lost to her in a singles match. Then she came back in a tag team match and lost the game, got paid by Bianca Belair. So all of a sudden, now she's the number one contender for Oscar. I don't get that. All I'll say is on the matter, as long as she wears a good attire, she can wrestle as much as she wants. <laughs> of course, Ben only cares about seeing her body. That's all he gives a fuck about. They just want no, to fucking stop straight. So um, uh, to me, I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't, listen. <laughs> Well, think about it. Who Red, the, the fuck story... is who the fuck is writing this? I, I don't get it. Yeah, but Red, think about it. The story is Zelina Vega is sick and tired of of being in between the two fucking horny fucking dudes, and she wants to do. She wants the story is her taking her career in her own hands because she's sick and tired of just managing two goofs who fucking keep arguing and flirting with chicks. Isn't that good enough? That's yeah, not good still, enough for get, me. I kinda, at least get a, I, get in the ring think... first. Let's see her main event or some shit. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the one problem I have with this. She shouldn't have ran to the champion. She should have ran to the ring with her gear and said, I'm ready to fight. I want to wrestle. I'm officially in the women's division full time. I'm not a manager no more. Give me some competition next week. And she could have easily fought like Ruby Riot next week. And it would have been okay. Not straight to the champion. That tells you how weak the women's division is on Raw. Um, just, just, just pointing that out there. Up next, we had Bobby Lashley defeating Eric via submission after securing the hurt lock, the master lock. You know, uh, Bobby Lashley quick, getting a quick win there. Nothing special. Another plus for the Hurt Business. We go to Raw Underground, and we have uh, Braun Strowman making his uh, Underground debut. Uh, I guess SmackDown guys can come on, on Raw Underground as well. Um, he interfered in a fight between Riddick Moss and Dolph Ziggler, which I actually wanted to see that entire fight because Riddick Moss, Moss and Dolph sound great. Uh, Tyus O'Neal tries to fight Strowman but was quickly choked out by Strowman, dominating everyone. And all of a sudden, Daba Kato, which is Baba Tunde, steps in the ring, and uh, Shane McMahon announces that next week it'll be Braun Strowman versus um, I'm gonna call his name Baba Tunde for Raw Underground next week, which is which was uh, I think it's cool, and they're gonna beat the shit out of each other. That's all I want. Jay. Kevin Owens defeats Alistair Black via pinfall after a stunner. Black oh. jumped Owens before the match and was dominating until the lights flickered. Hold on, Matt. Distract- Hold on, Matt. Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, um. I don't know if anyone noticed, but Pineapple Pete was at uh, Raw Underground. Yeah, yeah, Pineapple and Pete he's, was there. He's a he's a local he's a local guy. He, I saw him wrestle before he joined AEW. So that guy's making the fucking rounds, man. Yeah, he's hustling. You, you hear that, Matt? Um, Pineapple Pete was in uh, Raw Underground. Was he really? Damn, yeah, yeah, he was. was. Yeah. My son is real hustling on these brands over here. Yeah, okay. it's hustle game. He's like, "Oh fuck it, I can leave from one floor, one, one floor of the city to another, and I'm gonna get my, uh, I'm gonna get my face somewhere." Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, so, Red, I want you to to talk to talk to the uh, talk about this one because I kind of was lost in the shuffle on this one. What was the story going on back and forth between Keith Lee and um, Drew McIntyre during these segments during the night? Because they started getting heated, heated against each other in the back. What was going on? I, to, to, to be honest with you, it's – it's once again, the, the writing is all over the place on Raw these days. I don't understand why all of a sudden there's this banter with them now. It's, it's almost as though that they're trying too much to prove the internet fucking fan base wrong. 
by saying, oh, he's, you know, he's dead in the water already, but no, he's not. He's already getting the main event pushes. It, I don't know. I don't know where this is coming from. I, I can't even understand what, the, what their whole logic for their, for their banter was going off. Like from and, best and, friends to automatically hating, like, like brawling it up. I don't understand. Like, it was just weird for me. Henry, what you saying? They, they're going to put them to wrestle again this week and Monday Night Raw for the third time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that's how it's um so up next we had um which by the way the, the lights were flickering, distracting blacks and Owen, black and Owens, which was retribution again. Mm-hmm. Um Riot Squad defeat Natalia and Lana. I'm not talking about this because Lana and Natalia I think is the most desperate and stu and most idiotic pairing I've ever seen in my life. I don't care if they're best friends in real life. Lana has no talent whatsoever. Lana's a waste but- of a roster spot and um, Natalia needs to retire, um, but, but or at least she needs to be a manager because I can't take this shit no more. It's the waste of a, it's it's a waste. What happened, Henry? But but you see what they did to Lana, right? They pulled her through a fucking table just because you know you know they pity. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they put Lana through a table, and then it's almost like it's the saying, "Oh, your man was talking shit." Well, watch this, you're going through a fucking table. Yeah, good, good. Question, question, question is, man, be possible. Did Liv Morgan? Um, did Liv? Did Liv? And yes, did Liv Morgan? I went Luke all right. Um, <laughs> fucking Matt Ben Axe did Liv Morgan look alright <laughs> um, she was looking good man was yeah, looking of course good. Was mighty good. fine for you Ben for you uh, we had Seth Rollins versus Dominic in a steel cage match which um, I thought it was fun I mean Grant are they, are they milking this out now for sure um, but can't be mad at it <laughs> it was pretty fun um Buddy Murphy um, fucks up the, the the door for Rollins, which makes Rollins not be able to escape. After the match, he obliterates Murphy. And now next week for on Raw, after Rollins basically kicked Murphy out of the group, it's them two for the number one contender for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Mm. How does that make any sense? Um, they're gonna, they're gonna, Rollins just beat the shit out of Murphy, but now they're, they're, they're tag team again? That doesn't make any sense. They're going to break up. And Seth Rollins probably gonna. I don't. I just don't get it. One more match with Mysterio, and then he's just gonna leave because. Oh, he, Henry's talking. Sorry. Um, I call it Becky's about to give birth in three months, so he's probably gonna finish up. He's gonna turn on um, Buddy Murphy, or Buddy Murphy's gonna turn on him, and they'll probably wrestle, and then he Seth Rollins gone for a couple of months. Yeah, he'll be gone for a couple Seth. of months. Seth will be gone for a couple of months, and then comes back around Royal Rumble time. He'll yeah. be like the thirtieth entrant or some shit like that. Was that Ben? Did I, did I just hear right? Did Dominic Mysterio beat Seth Rollins in a cage match? No, 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 no. No, 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 he didn't win, no. Oh. Oh, okay, that's that, that's okay then. All right, <laughs> so what else, Matt? <laughs> um, so after the steel cage match, we finally had the main event, which was Keith Lee versus Braun, uh, not Braun Strowman, I'm sorry, Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre. And if Keith Lee won, he um, had a chance at the pay-per-view, but unfortunately, Retribution came and caused chaos, interrupting the match. Um... And, and quite possibly the, the the most badass scene I've seen on Raw in months, maybe even a year. The Hurt Business coming out looking all badass, taking off their suit jackets, and they are the new security for Raw for Retribution. And they um, they fight off Retribution, and Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre do a front flip dive from the top rope to close the show. Red, what do you thought about the ending segments of Raw? Because um, people are giving um, the Hurt Business the best amount of praise. Yeah, I, w- I was about to say that, um, Ben, you're missing out. You might actually enjoy the Hurt Business. It's actually a good look for them there. They look so I've badass. Been, I've been keep, keep it up to date with them. I watch all the highlights. Right. But um, with the ending, like, so the Hurt Business beat down Retribution, but hasn't Retribution got two women then? Yeah, but they didn't touch that, the women. That's exactly what I think, because they were like about 15, 16 of them. You got four guys coming out to to fight Retribution, then two other guys jump on Retribution. So that's six against like fifteen twenty, and Retribution looks bad. So I don't understand it. it makes no, it's, the logic don't make sense. Yeah, uh, I it, it's it's gonna be a thing to where they're just gonna wind them down. It's just gonna be the the, the five, and then that's it. But they just want to make it look like they're bigger than they are. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> so what up, Matt? All right, so up next we have AEW Dynamite this week, which I already know Henry has a lot to say about that one. Uh, so we'll go over AEW real quick. Uh, the main event was the, the, the parking lot brawl, which we'll discuss in a minute, but let's go through the rest of the show, shall we? Um, what happened? 
Once again, this shit's all over the place. Thanks a lot. My notes are fucking awful. Um, so let's uh, let's do an update on the elite this week. The Young Bucks opened the show by going down to the ring to super kick an innocent referee. Um, uh, you what know the, the Bucks. F- what the that, fuck is with this? I, like I, oh, I, I, guess I, I can't. I, I can't with this. Their shit. heel turn red. Their heel turn is based on them being tempered, having temper tantrums, and being five years old. Uh, whatever. I, I like I said. I, like I said last week, I, I, I na- naturally they they are they're fucking heels just by looking at them. They look like fucking privileged douchebags. I, I, it's just with this turn, it, it, it to me it's like it's, they're trying way too fucking hard. Just last like two weeks ago, you 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 were fucking uh, up everybody's ass for being friendly and shit. Now all of a sudden now now we're tough guys kicking referees. Shut the fuck up with this. Um, See, I haven't. They I haven't, hold, on. Um, hold on, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, I haven't watched AW for a couple of couple weeks because, to be honest, I'm sick of seeing the same fucking people every week. Like, I haven't seen this episode, but I can guarantee I will know at least seventy five percent of the people that were in the fucking show. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's kind of pissing me off, to be honest. I mean, I watched. Um, was it all out or all in? It was fucking terrible. There was one good match, and I'm, I am kind of getting a bit pissed off with AEW. Everyone's saying it's fucking brilliant, but it's really not. See, Ben, ben, is, ben is in the same uh, wheelhouse with us. He's saying the same thing that, you know, you're seeing the same guys every week and, you know, the past few weeks that it, it, it's been piss poor. He hasn't watched it. He said he saw All Out and All Out was fucking trash. It was. It was very bad and, um, you know, it's there's no excuses there for that, for the night they had there and I don't think AEW, AEW was actually not that bad this week but it had some um, blots and I think this was definitely a negative here. Uh, Young Bucks go backstage to throw a stack of cash at Tony Khan. Oh, fuck. Van- so stupid. Oh. Which, which um, you know, I kind of like Tony Khan not being shown on TV. Can we, can, we, can we continue not to do that? Thanks. Yeah, especially um, if you look like you're fucking, you're about to hit up the, 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 the Fort Lauderdale golf course, the way he was fucking dressed. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it, exactly. It's too, lazy, it's too lazy, lazadaisical for me with that fucking promotion because no one's professional looking. The only one who actually comes dressed and looks good is Cody. Everybody else looks like they just fucking bought their clothes from the Hard Rock. It, it looks, it looks terrible. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get these fucks. WCW written all over it, and uh, yeah. they're, they're, the main focus is the elite. Yeah, so go on. Um, so after that, FTR mocks the two moody t- 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 um, chumps and the breakup of the elite. Uh, I think Tony Khan's gonna suspend them, and they're gonna be thrown off TV for a couple of weeks. Um, but you know, it's too early to tell. Um, it, it, it Hangman make- Page was hold not on. gonna sing hold on, match. Man. Hold on, man. What is it, Henry? Oh. God. It don't make Henry, this shut make, up. <laughs> it, it don't make no damn sense weak. to me. This all out shit. It's like their storylines all over the fucking place. It's just, I don't know. It's just stupid. Yeah, it is. Go ahead, yeah, Matt. So, um, Hangman Page opens up the show with a singles victory over Frankie Kazarian. Why these two fought, I have no fucking idea. But it wasn't actually, it wasn't a bad match, though. It was a good match. Yeah, it wasn't match, a bad match. Play- Counters, uh, plenty of counters, you, you, you as I remember. Correct. And um, Hangman had a variety of a, a lot of cool attacks. He had a, I remember, which I can't even believe I'm remembering this, a pump handle Death Valley driver. That shit was fucking hot. Yeah. Um, uh, in the end, Hangman um, did uh, the rope hung leg drop. Um, Buckshot Larry for the win. The finish was great. The match was great. Why they fought, you know, I, 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 maybe, maybe I should be a little more lenient as to matches because it was a good match. No, the match was play. good. But the, once again, it, it's just this brooding... Uh, depressed hangman fucking thing is going on. It's just it, it, well, listen, he's heartbroken. His his tag team partner um threw him in the wind. Oh please, whatever. Remember, no, what, no, like I said before, Ben, you were once a drinker. Were you ever a depressed drunk? Uh, no, I yeah, either was sick, together. got naked, or fell asleep, or all three. <laughs> exactly. So um. Um, um I certainly wouldn't be um, unhappy. Kenny Omega was Kenny on Omega. commentary for the match, and um, I liked how they kept staring at each other and shit like that. Uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's continuing the story there, and Omega versus Hangman's gonna happen in the near um, uh, you know, in the near future. Up next, we had FTR defeating Jungle. Uh, just said Jungle Express, the Jurassic Express in the non-title match. FTR used smart um tactics to control Jungle Boy's speed and Luchasaurus's power. Thought it was a great, another good match. 
Um, you know, uh, they, they're they trying to build their tag team division here. FTR gets up the win. Nothing special here. Um, but after that, we had Matt Hardy um, broken, a uh, possible broken knee backstage after he was in, in, in an insane amount of pain. Jericho was holding Flo, uh, Floyd the bat. So I'm pretty sure it was the inner circle um, taking Matt Hardy out of commission for a while. Red, two questions. What are your thoughts on FTR's tag team run? So far, and also, what do you think of um, the whole thing when how they're handling this Matt Hardy um, um, injury situation? I think the whole thing with with FTR, I think they're just trying to throw as much tag teams with them as possible. Get a to, record, get a record, get a record, or, or that, or just have the let them have the matches that they wanted, been you know the fantasy matches or whatever matches they've been wanting to have for a while, and then they're gonna be out. Like I, I don't really think they're gonna stay at uh, and um. At AEW for too long. I think they want to explore other 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 promotions. I think they probably want to go to um Japan or go um somewhere else. I they, they did, me- they did mention. On. that. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, they meant they did mention that, that they didn't want to stay in one spot. That they want to go to SWA, New Japan. So they want to explore other other options. So, I mean, because as soon uh, if if you heard this week, I think it was Tony Schiavone or Jim Ross. They said that the minute they signed the contract, they became number one contender. Which don't make no sense, but that's what they said. Which, so, by the way, <laughs> Shivani, uh, Jim Ross, what that, that fucking commentary is is it's it's going down the shits. It's it's, it's in bad. the fucking trailer, trailer park trash bullshit that they're doing. It's horrible. See, it's like so far you've mentioned about three matches, and there's only one person who I'm, who I'm actually surprised has been in AEW so far, and that's fucking Kazarian. The rest I could have predicted. Like I haven't watched it. I'm expecting MJF to be there right. somewhere, yeah. um, and I could just predict everyone that's going to be on the show. And it's quite annoying to be honest. The only thing I am positive about is uh, Willie Hobbs is there, and he's a fucking good wrestler. So at least you've got a new guy in there that. I, Hopefully, is going to be quite good. Yeah, we've uh, yeah we were we were we were high on Hobbs as well, and yes, pretty much Ben said everybody who he would predict was on the show has been on the show. The only one that wasn't that was out of the out of his reach would have been Kazarian. Other than that, everybody he knew was already there. So Matt, what else is there? Uh, just a quick side note because uh, you know I'm happy right now. Donald Trump just approved. TikTok's purchase of Oracle. TikTok saved. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> TikTok has been saved. The world. Um, well, well, look, Ben. You, I don't know why you, you, know, you wasn't gonna get the embargo. We're the one that, that was getting hit with the fucking embargo. Trump's a legend. Oh shit! Yeah, he's a legendary <laughs> asshole. That's what the fuck he is. Yeah. So what up, man? <laughs> So after that, we had um, MJF squashing Sean Dean after he poked him in the eye, uh, locked in the salt of the earth for the win. Um, basically just giving us a reassuring of MJF's greatness. After the match, MJF called out John Moxley for cheating in their championship bout. MJF demands to now be called the undefeated, undisputed, uncrowned AEW world champion. He's also teasing forming a faction. Which I'm all for. Give me that. Give me, give me, give me. He doesn't need a faction, but I think it's a. Uh, if you put him with, uh, I think the most asshole is faction like in AW, which this wouldn't make any sense, but I'm just talking about the biggest dickheads in the company. It would be MJF, Joey Janela, Ricky Starks, and fucking, um, Pac. and fucking like Sean Spears or something like that. Like uh, no, something no, like that. No, like, no. like the dick wads of fucking AW. It doesn't make sense, but. Just or, saying. Uh, or, once we we had we had another was that was that Henry? Yeah. Uh, or remember we've been they've been teasing that full horseman shit, right? For a while, they put him with Spears and FTR. Ah, uh, I guess you know to be, to be honest with you, I'm I'm already tired of this fucking talk about that four horseman. Leave the shit alone and just just do something else. I I just I get him get get people with him that's gonna like Matt said is gonna be arrogant and. It'll be like um what he had in in um in um MLW something like of that magnitude. Yeah, with Hammerstein, they got the AirPods. Yeah, we can see that going on. What else you got, uh, uh, Matt? So uh, after that, we had a quick, uh, which by the way I think is very underrated, a segment called "The Technique by Taz," um, which I think it's awesome. Analyzing Ricky Stark's spear and um his finisher, uh, I could literally watch a half hour show of Taz just breaking down holds. It's truly, uh, I think it's a great addition to the show. Uh, after that, Eddie Kingston cut a promo on three main points alongside Phoenix, Pentagon, Butcher, and The Blade. First, 
Kingston never lost a battle royal. <laughs> he doesn't say that every week now. Second, his group is a family, not a stable or a faction. They're a family of violence and will act as agents of chaos. Um, and Kingston then instructed the meat men to pick random jabronis for a vicious beating. Third, it is time for the blade to get his house in order. Um, I guess that's um, a reference to the whole love triangle of Blade, the Bunny, and um, QT Marshall. I guess that I guess he's saying like you need to focus on your fucking in ring career, not this broad. Right. Um, and, you know they have they have a quick segment there. Chris Jericho and Jake Hager then defeat Private Party. Red, what are your thoughts on Private Party's um a, a match this week? Uh, uh, um. People are saying her party looked like the better team by far. People are saying her party looked impressive this week. Uh, you know what I mean? It's 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 this whole Jericho, um, Hager shit. And by the way, you get hit with a bat. I, I think pretty much lights out, right? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> fucking what's it? Was it? Oh, was it Isaiah that got hit with a with a yeah, fucking Isaiah. bat? It was Isaiah, yeah. Dude, I've been hit with a fucking bat before. I've been hit with solid objects. You don't fucking continue a fucking match. But apparently. Super Isaiah Cassidy made it through, I, I, I guess. But once again, that, it, that's, it's shit like that that just starts deterring me from the rest of the match. When I see shit like that, it just bothers me. So um, granted, we, we talked about pri- Private Party last week, and we talked about we're still saying the same, we're seeing the same shit, and yes, we're still seeing the same shit. But yeah. now it's uh, sprinkled with fucking... Um, wait, 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 wait. Fucking, More shit. With, with, no, with fucking chocolate drizzles and um, and a little bit of, of of whipped cream. That's all it is. Well, honestly, I'm I'm I I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. But um, Juice Effect hits um one two three. They get the win there just to get their um their tag team record up to eventually fight for the tag team titles. Up next, we had um NWA Woman, World Women's Championship. As we had Thunder Rosa retaining against Eva Lee. Like we said in uh, Wrestling Rundown, this match ended up being a shoot fight. They don't like each other. It ended up being a legit. They were stiffing each other. It ended up being a mess. Um, they were given plenty of time, but um, you know they were given plenty it, of time. It should have been edited more because it it was recorded, and um, I still want to know why Thunder, they got Thunder hate. Rosa apologized. Thunder Rosa apologized to Tony Khan and said, "Listen, I, I I this is what happened in the ring. I'm sorry if you need to edit it, but I needed it. I I couldn't fucking back down. She was stiffing me." Yeah, I, I want to know where the real heat, where the heat is coming from. I want to know what the fuck is that about. The, the I, I supposedly, they, like, they met in the back and they just didn't get along from day one. Like, I don't know what the problem is, but um, you know, we won't, it, we won't know Henry, the what is it too, Henry, what is it? Two fiery Latinas don't know how to fucking. Maybe, it. maybe it's that, but there's word that was going around that Eva Lee has a bad attitude and that she. I, and when I saw the match, I knew she wasn't selling shit. She wasn't selling anything. No, she what, wasn't. Eva Lee, Eva Lee, they say Eva Lee has a bad attitude, so I don't know. Oh, that's okay. Well, yeah, well, she's she's Boricua. That's what the fuck happens. Whatever. She's fuck. <laughs> I know. Fine a couple, I know a couple. Huh? What was that, Ben? It's fine by me. She's good to look at. Oh yeah. Listen, I just I, I just know a, a bunch of Boricuas that are like that. Most of them are in my family. So next up, <laughs> uh, after the match, Ricardo Shida comes in to save. Um... Um, made the save when Diamante attacked Under Rosa. Shida handed back the NWA belt to the champ, but she. Held on to it a little little too long. So I guess we're going to get that rematch for the NWA title this time, not AEW title. They might do champion versus champion. They might do, like, winner gets both belts soon. Um, anything for the women's division to get better. Um, we had a quick segment, for um, which I know I, I know Red wants to talk about. We had uh, part two of Miro's debut on AEW this week, and it was Miro bench pressing. He's eager to go in the ring and to devour somebody, he says. But first, before he does anything in the ring, he will provide the best bachelor party for Kip Sabian. Red, what do you thought about Miro this week? Oh, what the fuck? Oh, my God. You see, this is what I'm talking about. You now get him doing this goofy shit. So I'm telling you. This is... And then, they, and then they, they leave one fucking promotion from doing stupid shit to come to another promotion to do what? Stupid shit. I don't, I don't. And then he's promoting his Twitch and, you know, it's, it, I don't Kip know. as well. Yeah, both- yeah. And it's, it, it's, you know, the only hope is, you know, everybody's talking about that, um, that he'll turn on Kip or whatever fuck it is and maybe... It'll be found out some stupid storyline that Penelope Ford is gonna be, you know, cheating on Kip with Miro. I don't. I, it's just, it's just, it's already fucking convoluted. Much. This is a general hospital, pa. Ben, are you, Ben, are you are you happy that Miro made it to AEW? 
yes, but I'm I'm with you. I mean, I like Kip Sabian. I think he's quite funny. You know, he's a bit camp and all that. And I ne- I'd never mind seeing Penelope Ford because she's absolutely banging. But to put Miro anywhere near Kip Sabian and just not come in and fucking demolish someone. Like you said, he's leaving WWE as a bit of a party joke to go to AEW and be a bit of a party joke with a camp guy. Just let him cut. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Matt Cardona, but at least they kind of bought him in properly. He's actually had wrestling matches. Um, they made him look fucking good. Right. Miro's come in. He's fucking Kip Sabian's bodyguard, and now he's bench pressing. We know he can bench press. He's fucking massive. Put right. him in there. Let him kick fuck out Yo. of someone. And don't do all this goofy shit. I'm with, I'm with you guys, to be fair, but I'm glad he's there anyway. So what's next, Matt? Um, on AEW, um, after that, we we had the main event, which was the parking lot brawl, which Red, I want you to talk about in, in, in detail because people are calling this the best parking lot brawl ever, which I don't think this beats Eddie Guerrero and John Cena, in my opinion. But uh, what are your thoughts on the main event this week? Matt, before you continue, hold on a second. Matt, why don't you just go grab a spot and um, get vocal. That would make perfect sense, Jay. I mean, <laughs> sure, I could do yeah. that. Why don't you? Why don't you do that? While while I'll come, I'll talk to the guys. Uh, Just talk to them about the parking lot, bro. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. I was about to say, like, uh, we'll hang up here and go grab a spot and get vocal. All right. Uh, yeah. You know, it's probably it take us nearly an hour to think about that. Yeah, yo, honestly, it just I, I I had like a brain fart for for a minute. And I'm going, wait a minute. Why the fuck he just doesn't go on the? I said there's an open slot there. Duh. I love the fact that Ol- I love the fact that Olsi's gonna be a guest on his own show. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually he's on, he's on level he's on level par with me and Henry. There he goes. There Yo, what's up? Oh no, get off, get him off the screen. Get him off the screen. <laughs> You're a guest now. There we I'm go. Look at that. Yo, what's going on, guys? I'm a, I'm a big fan a... of the show. I love the show. Um, I love what <laughs> you're doing. I love the new equipment. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I like I like the guy that presents it, but the young guy with a terrible tash. I don't like him. <laughs> no, nothing. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> the terrible tash. <laughs> Yo, Ben, I love that shirt, bro. It's a, a local uh, tag team, that is. So, yeah. Right, cool, I'm fuck with it. So, so Red, what do you thought about the main event with? Uh, Why are you Carlos blocking Ball? the screen? What the hell are you doing? We're um, watching the ceiling. Why is that? Because yeah. I'm looking at my notes. You, f- well, you know what? You know what? what? You guys are killing me. What the How's fuck? That? He's watching porn. There you go. There you go. All right, all right. Um, look, all that running. Here we go. There I know go. Henry. It's... I know. I know Henry wanted to give that parking lot brawl eight stars if he could. By the way, that uh, camera you got, uh, Matt, is yeah. fire. What? Where, 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 <laughs> where you get that camera from, Matt? That what? That camera. That's a that's a nice. That's from your phone. This is my iPhone, dickhead. Wow, Android that's a, that, no, wow. wow. That, that must be that new update. It, no, it's it's a, it's a normal camera from the iPhone, dickhead, <laughs> Mister Android Mark. Wow. Why, why are you saying that I'm gonna give it an A star? Because because I'm, you love you love because you love you love this bullshit. I'm that was being sarcastic. Nah, 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 nah. That, that's 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 where you wrong, buddy. No, no, I'm, no, I'm being sarcastic, bro. I know you. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait, hold on, Henry. You didn't like it. No, no, no I liked it. I liked it. I don't. He think didn't it was, love it. I, I, I loved it because of the hardcore part, but I don't think it was better than John Cena and, and Eddie Guerrero. But Henry, Dave Meltzer gave it five stars. How the fuck is a five stars? It's a fucking, it's an extreme match. Exactly. Which, by the way, Dave Meltzer grades parking lot brawls in WWE that he doesn't grade them, but he gives them five stars. That's some that's some dick sucker shit. But I mean, that's uh, he's what a, it is. a young buck fan, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> He's trying to build bridges, like I said, but um, you know, the, it was it was entertaining. It was fun. Um, Red, who were, who were they painted up as? What, what movie they were? Um, that's from Dead Presidents. Yeah, that was hot. Yeah, that's Dead from Dead Presidents. They did, they was, did, that, they did that in Impact, though. They used to do that in Impact. You heard what he said? He said he, he thought it was Warriors. Warriors. I thought it was the Warriors or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that well. <laughs> he thought, but, um, you, you thought they were the Furies from the Warriors? <laughs> so yes, I guess. You were, were you even born when the Warriors was out? No way, he wasn't. No yeah, way. I was about to say that, but I know. Oh Mac my god, bad. it's called. You know what it's called? It's called um, you know, DVD, and I could go back and watch a movie from the like boys if I want. I don't to even. Lie. I don't think he was. A, he was even born when the Warriors video game came out. I don't even think he was born <laughs> then. On PS2, wow. yeah, I did. I actually got that from Blockbuster, dickhead. <laughs> fuck Yo, um, I was about to say that too. That he wasn't born when the Warrior movie came out. That's, that's the theme in his father's eyes. Listen, I, I was born in '98, so everything before that, you could make a joke oh, about. Oh, damn, '98! What a year that was. Damn, bro, I was 28 years old when that happened. 
Yeah, I've got socks. I've got socks. I've got socks that are older than you. <laughs> wow. You know what? I'm out of here. Man. How do I get out of here? And this, is, get, and this, this is what happens when you get on get vocal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> ladies so, and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Supposedly, supposedly someone got hit with a wooden fucking a wooden um, plank, uh, legit, yeah. and like got busted open. Henry, can you talk about the match? Because I honestly don't remember most most of it. Well, I know. I know there was there was parts where um they they I think they took a freaking railing. And I think Trent suplex Ortiz on the railing. Yeah. The craziest part was when uh, Santana Ortiz took Trent and they just a power bombed them on the front of the windshield of the car. It had all the glass, you know, on the back of, of, of Trent. I mean, that guy Trent, he takes a lot of bumps. By the he way, I learned this week that in England, it's not called a hood. It's called a bonnet. Yes, it is. We call Bonnie. Yeah. Well, I learned. I learned. I learned, some, oh, right. learned something new every day. That's it. Say, wow. You're not too old to learn something new. All right. So, uh, uh, Ben, I think that this will be a match right up your alley. This is something you, you should, you need to watch. And Yeah, I mean, honestly speaking, I remember watching one from WCW. Was it William Regal and Fit Finley? Which was another great match. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah. I remember that. They That's are. the first one I remember. But I, I like all these guys. Um, I like um, Best Friends and I like T- Santana and Ortiz. But the, the question is, did Sue make an appearance? Yes, she did. And she drove I'll, them away. I will watch it then. I will watch it. Now, my thing is, my thing is, okay, I don't know if you guys are going to agree with me. Did you think Trent and, and Taylor should have won that match instead of Santana and Ortiz because supposedly their background from the hood and all that stuff? Well, yes, they should have. They should. Yes. Uh, um, the the pr- uh, proud and uh, proud and powerful. They should have won that. That's like that. That should be like their like you know how Mick Man- Man- has the Hell in a Cell. Their their their, their, their match should be their mat their their specialized match should be like the parking lot street fight yeah. kind of shit. So I mean I get that, but they wanted the ending with Sue the mom giving the middle finger and fucking you know and they and they drive uh. away happy. Which by the way, um, they fixed that car one week. Fuck out of that's here! A that's a, that was a rental. That was a rental. They took, they took them to Cubans. The Cubans know how to work with uh with, with, with mechanics. They know how to fuck with cars quick, bro. I guess. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Um. So that that was the end of AEW Dynamite this week. And uh, like I said, which by the way, that's an old picture of me next to Red. Uh, that, that mask is terrible. Uh. So he acts like it's an see. old picture, like it was from fucking the 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 nineteen fifties and shit. It's like, dude, this shit was like COVID. That was like two April. days. Before, that was like two days before I found out my uh, that my my ex cheated on me. It was like yeah, it's probably uh, like that exactly. It's like COVID. <laughs> it's like COVID April. Like come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, not, not 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 with the shit. So let's go to NXT real quick. I like I said, I um I I really don't know the order again. It, it, you know, I wish I could be better at that, but I can't. So you don't fuck yourselves. Um, <laughs> Casey cut Ka- and Zaro and Caden Carter defeat Zia Lee and Jesse Camilla as um NXT is now building up this team called the KCs, which. What else are you gonna do with them? You yeah, can't do anything too, else. There's too many. Listen, they're gonna Casey, Casey, the Sunshine Band. Yeah, exactly. If they're gonna if they're gonna keep if they're gonna keep the women's tag belts, they gotta build up some teams. So I guess the Casey's, which they are best friends in real life, I guess they're trying to build that up. Which I'm not mad at. Finn Balor cut a strong video promo this week comparing Finn as champion in the past to who he is today. Um, Henry, what do you think of, of Finn as champion so far? Because people are saying that you could tell that he has a direction of his own character this time around. Yeah, I mean, he reminds me when he was in Japan. He got that that, that attitude. You know? He thinks he's the best. And ain't nobody gonna beat him. You know. So yeah, I know Red creamed himself after watching that. Uh, hold on a second. Um, Joshua he asked a question in the in the chat. Is uh, is it me or has NXT uh, hasn't translated well on USA? Or have they lost some steam? I don't think they, they lost, lost steam. steam. I think they should just move from another fucking day. They should they shouldn't be on Wednesdays anymore. Nah, nah. I, I, have to dis- I have to disagree. I have to disagree there, guys. Like, uh, you know, Jim Cornette made a, an opinion this week, and I usually don't agree with him. But the one thing he said was NXT is like, bore. It can be really boring at times. Like, um, I love NXT. The matches are great, but he said like his point was he, he, like if you were to take a bet. There's a bigger chance you'll see like a car crash on AEW or like some or some shit that makes your jaw drop. NXT is more of like let's get the matches over with, and like let's put the stories to the side. What do you think about his opinion on that? Well, honestly, to me, it goes it goes down to the level of look. You're watching the tale of two shows, in which you know we're gonna do a cutting a promo on that soon. 
You're watching a tale of two shows. You're getting the fucking Three's Company sitcom on one channel, and then you're getting fucking Star Trek or fucking CSI on the other. And, you know, when it comes to, to NXT, yes, they're, they're pretty much throwing out anything that has to do with anything charismatic or charisma or anything that way. They're trying to throw on big matches because they're trying to counter-produce. But if they were on Tuesdays, they don't have to worry so much about that. Well, like I said, Chris Jericho had an interview this week, and he said for NXT to get off their dicks and just go to Tuesday already and right. get their 250,000 viewers, which I could agree with. Just make it better. It's better for business. Just do it. Right, because, I mean, is, is USA Network going to put up with that? They're losing, you know, viewership. They went from 824,000 last Tuesday to 680 now. Yeah, that's, that's it's it. You, you're, you're basically you're basically um you're, you're canceling each other out and you're losing money on on, on for both brands. And what's on and what's on Tuesdays? They're gonna steal that slot from the Chrisleys, Modern Family. No, it's like a, it, it's gonna be that that USA strong arms Vince to say, listen, you gotta you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to move it because but, if you're gonna yeah. pull if you could pull eight almost nine hundred thousand on a Tuesday. Why, why are you making the fans split their fucking viewership? It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. It's just because Vince being a stubborn they, they prick. They thought competition would make it better. No, this is... This is it's Vince McMahon. It's Vince McMahon. But not only that, it's different when... Back in when WCW and, and Raw times, and Ben will know that it, you didn't have that many channels, so you didn't have that much options. So you either were going to watch... And there was no DVRs, barely. So it was like you were either going to watch one or the other. And hope that one of them is going to be on replay. Like WCW used to go on replay after eleven o'clock, they'll show it again. So that's a, a lot of times I watched it. The, this day and age is there's so many fucking channels. People aren't even fucking paying attention to wrestling. They're watching fucking men's figure skating on fucking uh, on well, ESPN twelve. You know NBA. The NBA playoffs are on now. The yeah. football's back. Um, you know, the NFL came back. So. A There's of- a lot of things that like people are preferring to fucking oh here we go Ben with that bullshit football it's not soccer so it doesn't count go fuck me whatever Ben uh, whatever pussy's <laughs> version of rugby <laughs> he said the pussy it's, version it's bollocks it's no. bollocks Ben it's bollocks he says bullshit. that but yet he has he's a, he he's a fan he has football jerseys I do he does Boy, it's still a pussy's version of rugby <laughs> what team are you what what fan are you in football. You mean American football? Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's yes. Right. I don't really have a fan. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of any team, to be fair, because they're all a bunch of fannies compared to rugby players. So. You're, a, you're, a, you're, a, you're like a Buccaneers kind of guy. All right, so let's keep, let's keep, got, keep, uh, let's keep The only one I've got, the only American football top I've got is a Tennessee Titans one from about 10 years ago. Oh, God. I wonder what player that was. Uh, by the way, anyone someone called, baseball someone called Gary George. George. Does anyone know someone Gary called Johnson. Hughes? Someone called Johnson. I don't know. Johnson, Red, you know any Johnsons on the Titans? No. I'm trying to think, did Keyshawn, uh, did Keyshawn play for, for the Titans? Uh, no, no. No, it wasn't was Keyshawn. No, Red, you know the name Gary, do you know the name Gary Hughes? Gary Hughes, no. Baseball. Uh, well, suppose he just passed away. He's a big, supposedly a big deal. I don't know his name, whatever. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa defeated some enhancement talent this week. He went to beat down the man afterwards. But then Jake Atlas, uh, who cut a strong, quick promo from... Uh, from uh, you know about next week, um, what do you think about Jake Atlas? They're actually giving Jake Atlas kind of a, an opportunity to show what he could do. I think it's okay. I don't think he's a superstar by any means, but um, I was surprised that, that he even came out. I am. Too, I was too. Is, uh, he, is he a face? Who Jake Atlas? Yeah, he's yes. supposed to be. Yes, he's supposed to yeah, be. They, they make they can't make they can't make a gay guy a heel, can they? Because <laughs> they get done for prejudice or something. So well, but. Yeah, Velveteen it's, Dream's it's getting there. Velveteen Dream's getting there because he's, he's he's not straight, uh, and that's a fact. He's bi or gay, whatever. Just very calm. Um, but I guess Champa and um Jake Atlas will be fighting next week. Um, in whatever it is, we had Drake Maverick versus Undisputed Era in a handicap match. Um, uh, because Killian Dane really does not want a team with Drake Maverick. Uh, I guess they're gonna do this team hell no shit where Drake Maverick and Killian Dane are gonna be Kane and Daniel Bryan. I guess that's what they're trying to do here. It's not working for me. I hate Drake Maverick. And I actually think he was a waste of a contract. They felt bad for him because he oh, cried. Now they're yeah, wasting. That's exactly fucking what I said. They literally, felt they, fucking they, me. they literally felt bad that he was crying, and then they then like two days after they signed him again, they were like, "Oh, we should have not gave him that contract. It was a waste of fucking money." Which, by the way, rumors are going around right now that it's official that Tessa Blanchard just signed with WWE. 
Just want to point that out. Yeah, that's, that's uh, been going because, around. Now, yeah. what you guys talk about, the, was it the battleground? They used like a... Yeah, they used her fucking her fucking mold and shit for like the cutscene, which I mean, is true. They did on the down low. So why would they use her face and, or her, her likeness if she's not signed? They probably signed on the down low. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it, yeah, it don't they, matter yeah. if, who, if they signed her or not. But that's not her picture. That's a fucking photographer's picture. So they, they got they got to cough up money to that guy. <laughs> it's not to her. It's to, it's, to, it's to the dude. So um, fuck Tessa Blanchard anyway. Agreed. So during the match, William Regal had to force Killian Dane to even walk out to the ring. And even then, it was just to toss Maverick into the ring, telling him to take his beating like a man. Uh, Drake Maverick loses, of course. And um, I guess, like I said, they're going to build this whole team hell no shit. We'll see how, how it goes in the future. Austin Theory had an open challenge this weekend. It was Kushida. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think Austin Theory is a superstar. I think he has money written all over him. The dude is the dude. The dude has the look. He has the moveset. He's young as fuck. He, he's my age. He's fucking 23 years old. Um, I mean, I saw him and evolve. I knew that he was the future. But, uh, uh, you know, maybe he wants to bring see, everybody like, to his look. up to the roster. I don't think the guy can yeah. do it. No, but that was Vince's call. Triple H just pulled him aside and said, we're, we're going to ruin him. No, 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 no. Joshua, says, back to NXT. Joshua says, Austin Theory must be annoyed that he's going back to NXT. No, he's actually saved. No. He saved. He's probably to... he's probably he's saved and he's probably very happy about yeah. that because he was about to get buried. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and Austin Theory is like, I could see him doing as popular. Like, I could see him be like truly over, like in a year or two. Like that dude has a bright future. Yep. Um, up and down the line. Uh, so, but um, what do you think about the new side of Kushida we're seeing? Violent, you know, a more aggressive Kushida. People are saying. He's wasting his time on NXT, but I completely disagree. I think Kushida is, has a great role on NXT. Right? What do you think about um, Kushida's role over there? Listen, he, I tell you, he's him and fucking Nakamura. They said, "Fuck it, we're in the states. We we we're 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 making good money. We're relaxing. Yep. We're doing this. I don't care. Just book me." And now, with how they use him in NXT, it's a. I'm glad that they move away from the fucking Japanese stereotype shit. Get him as a legit threat to not only NXT, but to a 205 Live or whatever the case it is. And, you know, pick your pick your spots with him. Pick your poison with him. Yeah, no, agreed. I, I think, and like I said, I love Kushida. I love the Back to the Future gimmick with the vest. I'm all cool with that shit. I actually want the Time Splitters to be a thing again, but unfortunately that can't happen because of the Machine Guns are tag team right now. Up next, we had Shotzi Blackheart facing Io Shirai. I think... Um, who won that one, Henry? You remember? Io Shirai. Io Shirai won. Io Shirai won that. But people online are saying that that might have made Shotzi Blackheart's career. Correct me if I'm wrong. People are saying that that was like a star in the making match. What do you think, Henry? Well, uh, I don't know about that. I mean, that's people. I'm looking at the notes. People are saying Shotzi Blackheart had herself a star making match against Io Shirai. I thought. I thought. I thought. I thought, I thought it was just that uh, Io took care of her really good. That's what it was. Is she still driving the tongue? Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. No, she won't. She won't be big until she gets rid of the fucking tank. Yeah, she's still in that tank. Yeah, because she, she was. She was an evolve. She was. She was. I, I saw her wrestle. I forgot who she wrestled. She. She's. She's hardcore. She could take a beating. She can. With that yeah. fucking tank. I mean, I'm like, what the hell is this? Toys R Us. The fuck. <laughs> Black Friday. Running fucking Roger Stone all the fucking every week. I see her running that guy over. What the hell? Um. The NXT Women's Division is getting better, though, every week, um, as it needs to. Um, next week, there'll be a number one contender battle royal again. Oh, again. Again. WWE is the home of, we have no idea what we're doing with our Women's Division, and we're fighting random number one contenders by rolling up dice. Listen, AEW is the, the, the kings of fucking tag team matches, tag. and fucking NXT is the, the kings of fucking number one contenders matches. Well, I don't. I, I mean, I got that girl Raquel, or whatever her name Gonzalez. is. Gonzalez. Yeah, they should push her to fight Io Shirai. Why you got to put a number? She looks dominant. I mean, yep. she's the, the the heel right there now. But I don't understand all this damn battle royals. Yeah, no. It's, yeah, why, it's lazy. Why, why don't they? Why don't they do what they did with the North American Championship and have like a tournament and then have a ladder match at the end of it? Surely there's enough women for it. Yeah, there is. There make is. It, uh, it's, it's make it different. Booking. It's lazy booking, Ben. It's 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 them not knowing what to do. Io Shirai is probably upset because she's like, "Wow, like this." And hopefully, I I'm, I'm hoping they sign Tessa Blanchard because Tessa versus Io Shirai. Do, do you think that McMahon got his hands on NXT right now? A little bit. 
a hundred percent, a little bit. I, I definitely think because they were on USA and they're on national television, he definitely has a say in some things. Uh, sure. He probably he probably has his hands on it, but I ain't watching it. <laughs> it's one of, it's just one he of, definitely ain't watching it. that shit. Guaranteed. The thing with uh, battle royals is it just takes me back to the fucking divas times when when I see yeah. battle royals all the time. Yeah, yeah. the, 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 the Vicky Guerrero Invitational. Uh, PTSD. The PTSD. Do something yeah. different, man. Do fucking barbed wire. Bra and panties match or some shit. I don't All fucking right. know. Wow. All right, you oh, fucking out, juggalo. Out, that came out of Ben's wet dream. That's that night. juggalo shit. All right, that, was, all right, that, came out, that came out of Ben's dream from last night. Up next, we have juggalo Rizzo. shit. Oh, juggalo man. shit. Juggalo shit. Juggalo shit. Oh my god, you have <laughs> a juggalo on. shirt. I, I had them done. Uh, up next, we have Breezango versus Imperium for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Once again, their tag division is lacking. By the way, I must and... say that I must say that Matt's boudoir looks very inviting. I, don't, don't don't you like his room? It looks very um, intimate. Looks like he's got uh, UV lights on and a strip bar. Yeah, I'm telling you, it looks like he's about to entertain the ladies. Yeah, I got looks like that. The LED. Them curtains there, them curtains are about to open, and there's a woman dancing on the other side. <laughs> Oh nice! You got you got you got lava you got lava lamps, man. Yeah, he needs a lava, lava lamp. Lamps. I got uh, I could probably get one or two. I could probably get one for the room. I can see what's going on. Um, you got dancing some sunflowers as well. That's coming. Out, that's that's on Amazon's pre order. That's coming soon. So what else? What else? Uh, that's a wall. That's, that's a wall. So Breezango retained. The match was booked in a way that almost um showed you Imperium was the better team, but um, Breezango ended up um, retaining here. They can't lose the belts a week after it, right? And finally, can I just go ahead? Sorry, guys. Can I just ask why Brizango the champions? Because they, no they, they have no tag teams. Because they have no tag teams. Imperium are a fucking good tag team. Why? They, why just not leave on Imperium for a bit? I think they're going yeah. back because since NXT UK is is opening yeah. back up, I think they're going back. And, and also, are, surely, surely there's a better tag team than Brizango. Surely. Yeah, NXT but needs, NXT it, it was their the, turn. The it was their turn, pretty much. It was their turn. NXT should woke up to Ethan Page and the other dude, uh, Alexander from Impact. Josh Alexander. Like, Yo, we'll give you double the money. We need you in NXT because they need tag teams After. more than anything. I think they were really relying on getting Santana and Ortiz, and it didn't work out, and now they're like left with nobody. Their tag division is uh, terrible. I just watched an eight-man tag match on fucking Impact, and the North were in there. It was the North, um, Ace Austin, and... My man Fulton versus the Good Brothers and the uh, Motor City Machine Guns. There's four really good tag teams there that are probably better than any tag team in oh, NXT. Yeah. That, ta- that match alone has the better tag team division in- than NXT, clearly. So to, to, to finish up NXT, guys, we had um, Damian Priest facing Timothy Thatcher for the North American Championship. Um, I thought it was fun. Uh, Red, what are your thoughts? Uh, both of these guys are stars. I mean, you're not, you're not especially when you got... Uh, um, uh, um, a guy like Priest, who basically, finally, we we're seeing why he was brought into NXT. I mean, the only thing that I can say other than that is that I don't think this match should have happened on this day. It should have been booked for like a takeover, takeover or something. It, should, it was takeover worthy for real. Uh, maybe they'll, they'll do a part two. Um, Henry, what do you thought about the main event here? Damian Priest, of course, retains. Um, I mean, what do you thought? I mean, uh... I mean, Timothy Thatcher, I love Timothy Thatcher. Uh, and uh, uh, seeing this match, how Timothy's worked on, on Damian Priest's arm through the whole match. But the way I saw him lose is like, okay. I mean, you have to push Damian Priest because he just got the belt. So you got to push him to, you yeah. know. Um, but it was a pretty good match. It wasn't bad at all. I just I just feel once I saw Timothy Thatcher lose, I'm like, that man is never going to get a belt. He's just going to be, you know. I don't think he match. needs a belt. I don't think he needs a belt though. Not yet. He's doing great by himself. But he'll get it eventually. But he's not. He's not a young buck either. That guy's no. He's not. He's, in, I can, he's probably in his late thirty, maybe forty. I mean, how much longer can you have the guy at NXT? And then when you know when he goes up to the main roster, they're gonna shit on him. I got you right now, Alexa. How old is Timothy Thatcher? You know what? You know what? You go fuck yourself. Good job, right, so. buddy. It, it's so it was so bad that fucking it kicked um it kicked Ben out. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Timothy Thatcher is thirty seven. On good point, good, good shit, Henry. Yeah, yeah. Actually, on the mark. Thirty thirties. He's uh, I mean, I mean, he's a good wrestler. I see. I've seen him a lot in MLW, and yep. I'm, I I expected probably. 
for him to either win by disqualification, that they have another match, maybe in takeover with like maybe a stipulation or whatever. But for him to lose that way, um, I wasn't I wasn't a fan of it. I Even though either. He gave you a push, you got to push him because he's he's young. He just got the belt. But yep, for sure. Now, so let's 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 finish off the SmackDown guys. We had the um to open the show. We had the um. Oh my Excuse god! Excuse me. We Dirt had Miz and, Miz and Morrison opening the show with the dirt sheet, basically making fun of Mandy Rose being traded to Raw, poking fun of Otis along the way. Otis comes out hitting the cal- caterpillar and strips Miz down to his under, under, under. Uh, I can come under. I'm gonna call him his bloomers. Um, in his blo- in his underoos, his bloomers, whatever you want to call them, those tidy whities. Um, I think that was Vince McMahon written all over it. Oh, and of course, of course. Vince, McMahon, Vince McMahon um wrote that story in his journal and 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 that's when like he that was so him uh Miz was later interviewed interviewed saying it was a part of the plan he then answered a phone call asked if it was enough and hung up smiling uh later in the night it was revealed that Miz and Morrison are suing Otis unless he relinquishes the money in the bank contract red what do you think the future is for that and who do you think's behind this whole in, on the other side of the phone call who do you think's the guy trying to manipulate Otis in over here Ooh, okay. Probably, probably, yeah, it's probably his own his own fucking partner because apparently everybody in a fucking in the in the whole WWE universe is getting broken up. So it might as well break them up too. Yeah. Everybody's getting broken yeah, up. I, I will say this week is, is is a current theme of Vince wanting to get rid of tag teams in general because they're breaking up every team and their fucking mother over here. It's ridiculous. The thing uh, is, I must say, like they need to get that briefcase off Otis because he ain't done yeah. fuck all, has he? They do, and I think John Morrison should get it. Um, I think he. But the funny thing is, he's been having that shit since WrestleMania. Usually, by now, somebody already had cashed it in. So what? The yep. fuck are... I think because they have no idea what to do with him. They have no idea what they're gonna do. They have no idea what the plan is. There's no way Otis is taking it off Roman. It's not happening. So I think the better idea is just to get him the the briefcase off of him, and just call it spade for spade. Up next on SmackDown, we have Cesaro defeating Graham Metalik in a quick, uh, quick match. I think I think it was great. Uh, the slow build up to the Lucha House Party breaking up continues. That's another team that's getting broken up. Lucha House Party is going to be broken up as well. Uh, Let's just get rid of all tag teams. That's gonna, Fuck that's, it. That's going to happen in Clash of the Champions. Fuck all tag teams. Fuck I'm all done the with tag, the tag teams. teams. AW signs ninety-seven more tag teams. <laughs> yeah, for real. And, exactly. You know, you know what bothers me about this whole thing, Vince. Vince happens to forget that most of his money and profit in the nineties was based on tag teams. The Road Warriors, um, um, Demolition, uh, Brain Busters. Uh, yeah, those Power teams glory. made those teams made most of the Canada Connection, Strike Force, Heart Foundation, Me- Demolition, Me- the Mean so, Street Pop, Me- yeah, Street Pop. <laughs> exactly. Listen, fuck it. Why not? Like that. That's what bothers <laughs> me about Vince. It's like you know your bread and butter's at. That was like your main highlight back in the day, and now you're basically just saying it don't matter. Uh, supposedly there's new tag belts that are already done, but they don't want to wait. They want to wait until there's a live crowd. Bullshit. Um, but we'll see the future of the tag division soon. Uh, after a moment of bliss with Nikki Cross, um, Nikki Cross defeats Lacey Evans via pinfall. Quick thing. Do you see Lacey Evans' new gimmick? Lacey Evans carries a bottle of her own hand sanitizer and um, blinds people now because everyone's up? nasty. Are we um are, are we are we are we back to being a, a heel? We, we're doing yeah, that? she's a heel full time now. That's uh, confirmed. She's a heel. Okay, good. She has hey, her own hand sanitizer. Oh, Female version of the Big Show. Yeah, exactly. Technically, she's, it's yeah. getting there. Henry, what do you thought about Lacey Evans and her hand sanitizer? Listen, I'm tired of watching Lacey Evans. I mean, they're pushing that girl. Uh, I don't care. I honestly, I don't care. She boring as well. I I I, I, I can totally agree with that. Uh, AJ Styles defeated Sami Zayn with a schoolboy pin. I thought it was a great match. That Zayn had stuff. Match, yes. It was a great, very good match. The most dangerous uh, move in wrestling history, the schoolboy pin. The schoolboy. Yeah. Jeff Hardy ran to ringside and took out both Styles and Zayn before pulling out a table, a ladder, and a chair from under the ring. He climbed to the ladder. He climbed the ladder, but Zayn rolled out, and Jeff Hardy announced that at Clash of Champions, it's going to be a triple threat ladder match, which, sign me up. Yeah. I'm, 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 sign I'm, I'm me with up. that. That could easily steal the show. Easily. Um, by the way, guys, um, just on a side note, everyone's wondering, where's Nigel McGuinness? Where's Nigel McGuinness? He was actually commentating 205 Live this week. Hopefully we see him on NXT again, but he's back. I just want to point that Wouldn't out. It, it would be awesome to have Nigel McGuinness and motherfucking um, Wade Barrett in, in, uh, in commentary. 
I'm all for yeah. it. Sign me up. They wait very time with NXT UK. No, yeah, that's right, because he's at NXT UK, so. Um, mm. Also on SmackDown, we had um, Big E makes his return and he's livid. He loses his shit. He, he, he has a meltdown. He's pissed. Uh, that's cool to see on Big E's end. We get another video package of Carmella, which is confirmed as Carmella because we found out a tattoo that she has. People are that much of a creep to find that out. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> that's wow. fucking Carmella. Um, it was Ben. It ben, is... ben told me. Ben Ben pretty much like he leaked that out to ben, me. Ben, you zoomed in on the tattoo, didn't you? It was you. I know every inch of that woman's body. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. What a deal. <laughs> um, I think Sasha Banks. Got... To be honest, I, was... I, didn't even... I didn't even know there was a new woman, so. <laughs> and she's Sasha not a new Banks. woman. Oh, no. Sasha Banks is back and discusses um why she's up about what happened last week. Bailey beating her up. And Bailey beats her up again, which... Thank God, because this shows that she will be out until Royal Rumble. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, which is definitely needed. It's necessary. And I think, I think Sasha is also going to be filming the next Mandalorian season during this time. Huh? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, that we, now that we know about that. Um... Oh, God. The two worst things in the world, Star Wars and wrestling fans. Okay, I, now you go on mute just for that yeah, shit. Mute, you know what? Shit. Just for that. Shit. Now you're punished. I had to mute punish you shit. for that. Um, you're, on 30, Bliss, uh... you're on 30 second timeout, sir. Uh, quick side note, Alexa Bliss <laughs> did the sister Abigail to Lacey Evans and just walked away like she was like fucking in a daze, like she was high. Um, she was zoomed off some shit. Uh, which is, it is the, it is what it is. Um, and finally to end SmackDown, we had a tag team match between Roman Reigns and Jey Uso versus, um, Sheamus and King Corbin in a Samoan street fight match. Okay, um, Ben, you're back, Ben. Now behave yourself. No more Star Wars, uh, negativity, please. Okay, all good. Okay. <laughs> Um, hold on. Uh, Uso hit Corbin with the Universal Championship belt, allowing Reigns to hit a spear before coming off the top rope to secure the pin. Um, Reigns, at the, Reigns at the end of the show looked annoyed with Uso stealing the pin because you know it all, Reigns only cares about himself. Uso walks up the ramp celebrating as Reigns remains in the ring, and um, his smile turns into a, a heelish smile to end the night. Um, what do you think about the whole Roman Reigns and Jay Uso storyline we're going with here, Henry? You think it's a you think it's believable because I think what they're trying to do here is show that Roman Reigns is cool, calm, and collected during the week, but when the prize fight happens, he's going to annihilate this fucking motherfucker. Well, it, it, well, you know what? It's funny that you say that because I love that promo they did with um, narrated by Paul Heyman, and they talk about the dynasty, the Samoa dynasty, and all that, and then you see this the way the match and I mean the combination of. Of uh, Roman Reigns hitting the spear and this guy jumping off the top rope was a good combination. I, at first, I didn't like it because I was like, oh, you know, this don't, don't make sense. But I, like I said a couple of weeks ago, the way I look at it, I think what's going to happen is Roman's going to beat uh, the Uso and then his brother's going to come back and they're just going to make they're going to make a new faction of Samoans. That's that's the way I'm looking at it. It's very possible. So, uh, that was the tribal chief. Remember that. And then the trouble call him in, they call him out the general consul, some shit like that. So some shit like that, like ben, yeah, like fucking ben, ben. Are you happy about uh, heelish Roman? Um, so he's still using the spear. Does he still have the same music? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. He's, 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 he's not a heel to me. Then he needs to change his change his finisher, change his music, and actually go full ball heel. I'm glad they put him with Ray, with um, Heyman. But the question is, when Brock comes back, which he will at some point. Right. What are they gonna do with with Brock then? What are they gonna do with him? That's a good question. Well, that, Brock's gonna come back jealous, and it's gonna be Brock turning face. I think. Uh, which is no one's weird. gonna. No one's gonna cheer Lesnar except me. So there's no I'll point. Cheer uh, I'll cheer Lesnar if you give me a different side of Lesnar than and into the I, I could believe in. You know, Ben. Let me ask you a question. I just think. Go on. Let me ask you a question, Ben. This piercing that should hurt. That one. That should hurt. Uh, no, just feels a bit. It felt a bit funky when I had it done, but no, I've got fucking like forty tattoos, so a little fucking piercing don't mean nothing to me. No, I just got my ear pierced, my ears pierced, but like I'm wondering like, here. I feel like that shit is like bang. That shit Red, hurts. Red, you gonna see Mac? Red, you gonna see Mac come to your show with a with a pierce? A right here, bro. It's coming soon. Yeah, no, no. Believe me, I I, I, I know, I know. I, once he starts asking questions like that, he's he's inquiring about certain shit. Next is no. gonna be his, next is gonna be his balls. He's gonna pierce his balls. I already did. You just haven't seen it yet. Yeah, exactly. So um, <laughs> besides that, that's that's the weekend wrestling that I watched. 
All righty, so uh, we're going to go around the horn, MVPs. Ben, you cannot uh, be participating because you didn't watch shit this week. So uh, I, I watched Impact. Oh, okay. You, you okay, so oh, there you go. Who do you give the MVP to for an, on Impact? I can't just give one. I mean, the tag match was fucking brilliant. There was a good match between um, Trey Miguel and TJP. That was a really good match. Um, Eric Young is doing very, very well as champion. I like his new nickname, you know, the world, uh, world-class maniac. It's a fucking great name. Um, so, for in, in general, Impact for me is, is, is killing it, and it's been killing it for a couple of years now. Um, so, yeah, I don't have an MVP. It's just Impact in general, I think, for me. Ben, uh, try, to, try, try, your, try your, your damnedest to listen to this week's episode. We have Impact Brody stopping by. He's, he's, he's a big Impact wrestling fan. And we discuss uh, what's been going on in the transgressions of impact in the past couple of weeks. So you'll you'll probably enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. So who's your who's your MVP, Henry? Uh, I gotta go with. Uh, I mean, it, I gotta go with the AJ Styles match. Um, and Zach and Zane. I think that's that. Um, AJ Styles. Cause that's one of the best matches I've seen all week. I'm messing the shit up. Matt, who's your Matt, Matt? Who's your MVP? My MVP this week is um, Adam Hangman Page. Uh, you know his first singles match, being back from that whole tag team bullshit, and I was surprised. I was surprised at how well him and Frankie Kazarian worked together. Hangman brought a lot of moves we haven't seen from him in a while, and I think that uh, it proved it just reassured to me that he could easily be a, a great champion singles wise. So H- Hangman gets it for me. As much as I want to give it to the participants of the parking lot, the parking lot match, which is actually you know it's well deserved, but I have to say I this Fuck week I, I got to give it to M- the MVP this week to Seth Rollins for taking care of Dominic this week, man. He really made the, he made it he made it look good. And that's what he's been doing. That's what he's been doing. He's been putting that shit over every week. All right, guys. A special mention. Sorry, quick special mention to Superhuman as well. He's got a new voodoo doll. Make sure you go buy it. <laughs> you just shouted oh. out Superhuman. <laughs> Damn fucking straight. Oh, You're Jesus back here. Christ! Oh my, not, we we missed you on the show. Now now you can leave again. You shout it out, <laughs> fucking superhuman. <laughs> Whatever. All right, guys. Woo, woo. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for partaking and get vocal. And on this week's episode, make sure you check us out every Saturday at five p.m. And also make sure you download, share, subscribe the episodes every every podcast. We're now on Amazon Music, guys, so make sure you, you check us out there as a, on Amazon Music also. So check us out on all podcasting lots and social media outlets. Thanks again, guys, for partaking on the Get Vocal. All right. Take care. Laters. Olski's Tash, though. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's Turnbuckle Tabloid with Jay Santee and that other guy, Matt. Because it's not only the WWE or the AEW scene that needs to be recognized. Impact is actually being noticed on the wrestling radar these days. And well, 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 who we need to get back in this forum to talk about is our guy. We haven't spoken to him for a minute. Is our guy Impact Brody. What's good, Brody? Hey! What's good, people? What's good, people? How y'all feeling? You're James and Oski. My yes. guy, James and Oski. <laughs> you left us, man. You, you left us on man. the lurch, man. I apologize for that. You know, things, you know how sometimes, you you know, people encourage you to say, you know, and you encourage yourself along with that thing, Grant has the screen on the other side. Sometimes that shit is dirty, brown, and, and, and burnt up. <laughs> Just being real. But I would tell you, 
right now is the hotbed of what the fuck impact needs to be fucking talked about because there was big transitioning going on with the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the Black Wednesday and signings that came uh, after that. We didn't get to speak about that. Um, yeah. It, 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 it's definitely one of those things where you get mixed emotions for, for just the wrestling landscape as a whole because there was a big, big hype that Impact put on really the future, which they have delivered in a lot of ways, but there are a few ways that didn't deliver. But I would say for the majority of us Impact fans and even people that you know weren't tuning in to Impact, they were satisfied with what's the things that transpired at Slammiversary and going forward. I, and you know, what do y'all think? Do you feel like you know, it gives you, like, a little itch to watch Impact now. Well, i going to tell you, uh, I was excited, and the guys over here were excited about Simonverse. We watched it. We actually did a mm-hmm. live stream about it. Uh, no, now, now Matt is about to jump up in it. <laughs> I heard Simonverse. Oh, hold on. I got to put the mic on for you. Um, yeah, you on? I heard Simonverse, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I had to jump in on this. Yeah. So, yeah. It was spoken on. It was spoken on. Oh, okay, so, um, Oski, what was your thought about Slime Reversary at that time? Uh, because remember, remember, we was like, holy shit. We were shit. mad hype for We was mad shit. hype for it. Which could be our fault. And I really wanted it, to reach out and say, where the fuck was Brody? Because I wanted to hear yeah, his thoughts about exactly, it. Exactly, but, so, you know, I hate to say yeah, it. Yeah, because you know I'm going to keep it real when it comes. You know, I'm going to keep it all the way real with it. I'm not going to be a fanboy. Really? Listen, and that's the way. That's the way. You know, you should you should do it, real and honest. And and to be honest, some anniversary. I think the hype was too high. I think. If, I think. And I, and I think that's that could, that's it's our fault as a fan because we expected WrestleMania type shit with a with a with a show that it wasn't meant to be to be that. And that's okay. It was right. okay for what it, it was. It's a lower scale, it, right? One hundred percent. We we seem to have forgotten that one because I think everyone, just like you, me included, was excited, but. But Oski, I did keep a, a, a good, you know, wrestling mind about it, and knew they could only go so far. Yeah, you're right. People were expecting it was like a whole night full of of WWE signings. It was, it was built, it was built to be uh, outstanding. And I think that's um, looking back from because if if you were to ask me this same question the night after the event, I would have been like, this shit sucked. It was terrible. It was boring. Uh, it was overhyped. But uh, a month out of it, I, I think my opinions changed. I think I'm more on the edge of maybe it was shame on us. Maybe we maybe we, we hyped that show up way too much and gave that shit way too high of expectations. I don't think it was a bad show. I actually think it was a good show, but I don't think it was the great show that they were putting it out there to be. You know, um, because some of the shit just was kind of like, boy, I'm not going to act, act like Heath. I'm not on the Heath train. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Um, this whole appearance of Slammiversary, I think, could have been Something saved for for an episode of Impact, you know. Um, that Deanna Perazzo match in Jordan Grace was not good, man. I mean, me and, my, I, me and Red agreed. Uh, Red, you could agree with me on that one, right? Yeah, man, remember how boring we were that board yeah, that match? Yeah, I, I, I think I think at that time the way that the booking was, we were like. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> I was impressed with Deanna. Deanna showed something she never showed in NXT. Deanna showed that she actually was a really good Matt wrestler. Well, I, I think the okay. I think the way the the, the building was, I, I I guess the booking it just didn't work that night. Yeah, I do. But I don't agree with all the booking decisions, like the whole Motor City Machine Guns. Like I I called that out. Well, at, during the show when Motor City um came as the guest appearance, because I knew Shelly was not going to fucking ROH when they were training with Paven. Come on, it make no sense for a server. So I knew was, no, Motor City was coming out to challenge uh uh the Rascals, and I knew. With that win, they was going to end up being tag team champions when they uh, came out to the talent uh, the North. I knew they was going to win those titles on Impact. So I feel like that was way too predictable, too. It's kind of a slap in the face for the rest of the tag team division. Um, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. The, the Motor City Machine Guns are great. They're one of the best tag teams we've seen in a long time. But still, it's still a slap in the face um, to the rest of your division, just as well as Deanna Perrazzo coming and winning in their second match, too. But, you know, I, I'm liking what she's doing as a heel champion right now anyway. I guess it's just their way of um, bringing in a new Tessa, only she's not, you know, wrestling men. Because I kind of get that vibe. Hey, we'll, we'll fast forward to what's uh, progressing now. Um, mm-hmm. 
With the the, the 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 new signings, what's your thoughts about how is this affecting the the roster and how it's affecting the the progression of Impact? Because you would think that with getting these big names, it would Good help. Brothers, Eric Young, uh, the right. list goes on and on. Are, 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 are you are you happy of what's going on, or is it helping, or is it hurting? What are you, what's your thoughts about it? Those names are not going to be names to actually move the stick like that. I I enjoy it because it does make the roster stronger because, you know, the one gripe about Impact that over the time right now is in the heavyweight division has been thin. And, you know, that's been pretty accurate. You know, tag team division has gotten pretty thick. We all know the knockouts have got pretty damn good division now. X division has improved. You know, they got a damn good division. But that heavyweight division has been pretty thin. Um, especially with Tessa gone and then and Mike Elgin gone and all those other few names, my Brian Cage, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, you, Eric Young, yeah, good, but he's kind of, he's another impact return. It's, that was, that was nothing that was unexpected. We all knew when Eric Young was coming back to impact. We didn't expect him to go to AEW, you know, EC3. We pretty much all knew he was coming back to impact. We didn't expect him to go to AEW. The good brothers. Wait, wait, wait. Good hold, on, move. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, wait. I want to have a conversation about that. EC3, mm-hmm. you thought it would be an automatic to impact because... Yes, because of the ties to impact. That's the only reason. Not saying that yeah. AEW AW didn't AW want him. calling. But Not I would have thought, thought that the gimme would have been... Um, and this is a good... Nah. This is a, this is how, a, would, how would AEW be the gimme? When impact, he has a familiarity with it, the impact, and he's already he done didn't impact. Bad term. Because he already did it. Yeah, but here's the thing that I, I – and it's funny because I, I had a conversation with, with, with someone outside of it was would you have taken Miro over EC3 in the AEW? No. In the AEW? No. Right. Would you have taken Miro over EC3? In AEW, nah, but, no, I don't think so. Because to me, no way. I EC, as, as, EC3 as, as, is as, just as, a, a better character. So yeah, because to me, I would have said, um, although Miro's the well, he was the hottest fucking uh, free agent, but I think EC3 fits more of AEW's fucking mold, and for Miro to go to Impact, I would have thought that that was like. Straight up, uh, monster fucking heavyweight contender for the belt easily. Oh yeah, all, all day. That's what Impact offered him: six figures and a, and a world title run. Exactly. You know, yeah, they tried to get him. Yeah. Well, I would have taken I him to come into whatever EC3 pay per view, whatever what it was, and fucking get the belt and say, um, "Come get me." Like I would have loved to see that happen there. That Miro did. That. Uh, me too. I mean, remember Miro said. I mean, he tried to trick the world. Remember what he said. He said Impact had the best show going, on, best wrestling show going on TV. You remember the article when he said that? Right. When he said he was retiring from wrestling. So I mean, that's a tough one. I, I think it would have made a big splash. That would have been the biggest splash if Miro would have showed up on Impact. I think it would have moved the stick, you'd have brought up viewers and whatnot. Um, EC3 is a hell of a talent, but being that he's been in Impact before, it's not going to be a move to make the fans like, oh shit, Impact did this, you know, this really big thing. I do think EC3's character is fit more for Impact. I don't agree with you on that with him his character fitting better than the AEW. Right. But I do think he is a better character, you know, as a whole. And AEW could have benefited from him. Right. So, um, just just give her a, a brief rundown on what's the idea about the TNA Championship and the Impact belts. What's uh the different the uh, difference and what's what's running down on how those storylines should be recognized? Well, I think they should have did the storyline the original way they planned on it by having a tournament for the TNA title and Moose winning it. Therefore, they legitimized it more Mm. as opposed to him just pretty much pulling it out the trash can. So I didn't like that part of it. You know, Moose does make it look good, prestigious, but I think that they decided to just switch the storyline when they signed EC3. And now they're kind of making – the title seem like trash again and i'm not liking that so um with the impact world title and then because i think the tna title it, it's just too much history to to make it the way that they're making it and you know just don't just 
they're doing it at the expense of EC3 because they signed EC3. They want him to be in a big story alliance, and they're using the title at the expense of it, and that's bullshit in my opinion. Right. So that that title should be used as like a secondary title or like damn near the number one guy in the company. That title should have been used as instead of you know Moose picking people to defend it against. That looks like a pussy move. It doesn't look like something that a strong heavyweight champion would do. So. And though Moose is killing it, Moose is probably the number one guy when it comes to just entertaining you in Impact right now. But the way that they're going about it with that title is not, you know, favorable in my opinion. Is Moose really that good, though? No. Yeah, in my opinion. He's working with what he got and he's doing the damn thing. I can't take nothing away from Moose. In In ROH, he didn't even talk. Right. So... I think he's doing better than Ring of Honor. I think he's grown immensely uh, in his yep. in-ring work and, and, and promo work. Uh, I, I, the I, biggest I, thing is the promo work for I me. Think, I think the biggest thing for me has to be either the promo work or uh, that and the gimmick. Like He is he is truly, truly bouncing off the page um, way better than him being bland in Ring of Honor. Uh, every promo he yep. does matters. Uh, he shows a lot of emotion. And, and I, yep. truly, I truly think I truly think he has gotten better. Do I think he's amazing? Absolutely not. I do. I, do I think he's gr- good? Sure, he has, he can he can get he can get better, and he will. But he's in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, just let's be honest. I love me some impact, but like, what characters really stand out? What characters make you really say, "Ooh, an impact"? Moose is really one of the few. You're right. You're right. Was it a big move to put um, Eric Young as a champ? It was a better move than um than um Eddie Edwards. So a um, big move, uh, I'm, I won't say that, but better move, yeah. Um, Eddie Edwards doesn't appeal to anybody, you know, as world champ. You know, he doesn't have that standout factor. I mean, it should have been on Moose a long time ago, but I don't know why they keep avoiding it. Um, I mean, I go with Eric Young because he's the maniac. He just left WWE. People can recognize that. You see, that's obviously what they've done. They put the title on everybody that's like recognizable right now. Alex yeah, Kelly being part of that yeah. because he was with that. He was in that tournament in WWE. Absolutely. So we all know what's been going on. They're putting the titles on everybody that's recognizable from WWE recently. So, um, which is stupid in my opinion too. Which is a slap in the face. But I would rather have Eric Young as the champion than 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 um than Eddie Edwards. What's your thoughts about uh, the 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 um, Eric Young Rich Rich Swan uh, angle that's pushing for it right now? Don't make it a world title program and for Bound for Glory. Don't do that. That's my thought about it. I like both. They're both a hell of guys in the ring. Rich Swan more so. But uh, I mean. Uh, who he's not be, believable who as a world title contender. Who should, who's the, who should be in that in that position? That's a tough one to say with the landscape, the impact heavyweight division. But if I'm gonna say anybody, they should have built it to put Sammy, Sammy Callahan back in there, or Madman Fulton, or fucking Moose. I would have said Moose, and I would have probably had said that. I would put a. I would probably put um, um Ace Austin back in that run. I don't think he's ready yet. I mean, as a character, yeah, I think he's ready. But, like, and there's a pecking order. But, well, you know what? Impact hasn't really given a shit about pecking order, have they? Um, um, I like Ace Austin. He's one of the one of the best ones on the roster to me, well, no doubt. They decide, but I think Batman Fulton could be used on a, on a better capacity, you know, for a heavyweight division that needs a heavyweight like him. Right. I think Batman Fulton could be utilized a lot better, and he should definitely be in their world heavyweight title scene, in my opinion. All right, so what's your thoughts about the tag team division right now? Because um, they had a strong run uh, not too long ago, and then you know, they, they introduced the Good Brothers and, and you know, certain certain teams. Ace Austin and they, uh, Madman Fulton now are group. But the other thing is that there's a lot of teams in there that just seem to me that although they look like they should be – Tag team contenders, they all seem mid card to me. What's your thoughts about that? Well, that's because you only got a, you got a top like four or five teams, and the rest of them are kind of mid card. But they're try, just mixing them in pretty well. Nobody's just kind of overtaking the others. Um, I'm not even really upset about that uh, tag team division. I think it's one of the stronger points because being that they have actual established teams that have been there for a second, been there for a while. Nobody's really 
jobbing, you know, the team that was jobbing was the Desert Hit Squad, and they're not a team anymore. So you can say it's competitive, especially with the addition of the Good Brothers. I mean, Ace Austin and um and uh, Matt and Fulnor, they look like a strong team. They don't win much, but you know, and and they look like a strong team that they should contend. I like the top of the tag team division with Good Brothers, Motor City, um, uh, the Rascals, the North, and um, I guess I'd say that's the top. I, I, I like that mix right there, so I'm not mad about that. Um, just recently, you had um, Triple XL went over the Deaners, but the Deaners have this whole thing of they job a lot, but they have this thing going back and forth, so I don't know what they're going to do with them. I guess they just want to use them for entertainment value with stuff like Wrestle House and all that kind of stuff because they do more gimmicky shit than anything. It kills, so, me, it kills me because that uh, when it comes to where Impact, the, I, I always looked at them to be the epitome of what the tag team division is. And I oh, I, I still look at it as like, it's, it looks like a crapshoot. What's a better way, in your opinion, that they could better that, that, that kind of division? You mean with the Deaners or just the division? Just the division in whole. I mean, to take out the the, the 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 funny nature of the division. The tag team division isn't something I think they should be gimmick, should be gimmicky as hell like that. You know, like take away a lot of these four four team matches. Stop making the same people contend all the damn time. Make it seem like everybody's you know competitive. And like, if you really wanted a number one contender that we can believe, have something like a tournament where a team that you don't expect to win, such as the Deaners make a strong showing and then you can believe that maybe they can be a title contender and stop going around with the beer jokes and stuff like that. You got to bring a more serious side to it, in my opinion, because pretty much all other organizations are doing that, you know? How's and that? right now I think that's the way that you need to go when it comes to the tag team division. You got to take some of that comedy element out. Impact's doing a whole lot of the comedy element. Yeah, you yeah. can't take it away out of no, wrestling. It's a part it's of it. A, but it's, it's not even Impact. It's just wrestling in a whole. Everybody it's wrestling be, as a whole. It's, everybody's yeah, a but comedian. Impact feels like they got to follow suit, you know, yeah. and they don't have to. They don't have to follow suit. You can put a little bit in there, but if you want your tag team to look legitimate, I mean, your tag team division to look legitimate because, you know, past those four that we talked about, it does look kind of thin, you know, and they're just trying to add more teams to try to fluff it, and that's not the way to go. Just don't make your bottom tiers, your mid-card mid tiers uh, teams, you know, be fluffy, comical-ass people all the goddamn time. You know, put some seriousness to them, put some urgency in trying, you know, in trying to look like you're legit in your wrestling style and what you got going on. What's your thoughts about the X Division right now? Because um, there's a lot of people who sat there and said that the X Division is actually building up. Sure, right? Yeah, it's actually building up to be something legitimate. Uh, but there, there's, I don't know. To me, um, I, I'm trying to find that superstar. They had the belt on them, but then they took it off of them. So we'll see. Uh, it, it was. Chris Bay. But I'm saying Chris the, 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 the X division should be a more competitive fucking division. It is competitive. TJP is showing his ass in the X division. I don't think anybody can argue that. TJP is like giving good match after good match after good match. Uh, I don't really see many bad matches in the X division nowadays. They're all pretty damn good. It's just I wish they wouldn't pass the belt around. If they want to make it legit, they should have kept it on Chris Bay. I get why they gave it to Rohit because Rohit's been around for a long time. He has a complaint, supposedly, and whatnot. Okay, I get that. But um, Chris Bay is the star. Chris Bay, him, or TJP are the guys that should be carrying the division because those guys are just that damn good. I like TJP really and Ace Romero. Are. I like TJP and Ace the Ace together, though. No, no, no. no. Sorry, oh, yeah. My, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad. No, no, no. It's um, TJP and, 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 and Fala Ba. That, that's it. I, yeah, I fuck with that. It's a good tag team, you know what I mean? I, I agree with that. You know, it's the whole old school of powerhouse, you know, and, you know, it's speedster. I mean, you can't go wrong with that, you know. It's, Hell it's yeah, very it's a old great combo style, for me. As opposed, as opposed with the brotherly feel, too. You know what I mean? I can dig it. I know uh, I know. Brody's a big fan of um uh, of Impact House, or what, what is it? What, what's, what's that shit? Uh, Wrestle House? Wrestle House. I know he loves that shit. I'm, I'm like this. I know it's, what, what it's for, and I, I, there's certain things I like, there's certain things I didn't. I laughed at, at, at uh, XXL. 
and the dinners and all that because it was it was meant to just be stupid and funny. Yeah. And then I was pretty high while I watched it. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm not gonna act like <laughs> lighten, lighten it up for Russell House the vibe right there. Uh, it, like, it has a purpose. I think Impact is uh, doing good in, in in some avenues. I think their tag division needs to be spotlighted more. I do. Th- I do yeah. think the Impact, the X division, needs um, some more top talent. I think. I think. I think giving Rich Swan that avenue again would be a great look for the belt. Um, the Knockouts yeah, division is finding its place, which is great, and. I think every week they're doing a consistent show, and I, and I don't know the last yeah. time I could say that about Impact, but they're doing a consistent show every week. They're backed by a great channel on Access, which if no one knows on the show who Access is owned by, it's by Mark Cuban and Steve Harvey, okay? Yes, so I don't yeah. think you have to worry about money, uh, so you're good on that avenue. And the whole EC3 and Moose, I think, I think adding two belts, making it two belts, two heavyweight belts is great for the show. I think it was needed. To add that to fill in that slot of usually the jobber match or something, it adds an, an important storyline there. Which and I'm a I big fan of the I TNA wish belt. They would have bought it differently. I, I'm a big fan of the TNA belt, and, and I'm happy to see what they do. But I do not think they should continue to rely on the WWE talent. Um, the, the sloppy seconds, uh, uh, Heath Slater. I'm sorry, I don't believe in the guy. I never have, and I never will. Everyone's talking about right. his big, um, big, big change in weight, and I'm like, I don't see it at all. Actually, I'm actually bored already. Um, Neither do I. The Good Brothers, the Good Brothers are cool, but like, I'm gonna be honest, irrelevant right now. Uh, for me, maybe, uh, maybe they, they they could get the belt soon or something because they need to do, they need to do more for me. Deanna Perrazzo is cool. Well, I'm okay with that. Uh, listen, the Good mm-hmm. Brothers do that talking shop mania shit, which is funny. It's all for jokes. Dude, there's two of them. Well, I, I, I they lost steam. Just making sure you know. They lost steam before coming. They um, lost steam because, you know, they weren't doing anything in WWE before coming over to Impact. They lost steam. And I feel the same way about the Good Brothers. And then when they revealed, it was a pointless reveal at Slammiversary. They didn't do shit. Yeah, yeah man, absolutely. The last thing we're going to talk about is um, what are we doing with the women's division? I, the, I'm gonna be honest. That's one of the uh, places, of the things that impact that I think is a bright spot. Uh, it, it, we definitely see that they've paired up knockout. So they're definitely playing with the idea of a knockout tag team championship again. Um, I think they've done great things with Tasha Steele. I mess with Tasha Steele because she was pretty much a non-factor in the NWA. She had no character. She had no no TV time. She was just losing to everybody she wrestled. So I'm loving what they're doing with Tasha Steele. I'm liking that they're bringing in new talents and actually giving them voices and, you know, and, and giving them screen time. I'm surprised about Tennille because, you know, I just thought she wasn't a good talent. You know, I got real cold on her when she came into Impact, but they're trying to do something with her again. I think they're doing a pretty good job to knock out the vision. I don't have much to say about that. They brought in all these different talents. They haven't signed them all. I don't like the idea that they, they have Deanna as the champion on a per appearance deal, even though they just offered her something, but, I'm not really upset about the Knockouts Division. I think that is doing they're doing well with that. Absolutely. I think the Knockouts Division has some great talent. Like you said, Tasha Steele is, is finding a place of her own. I, I love Ke- um, Kiara Hogan. I think she's she's great. Uh, mm-hmm. Even Havoc. I think Havoc could have a really good run with that belt one day again. Like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you guys have a good roster there. Uh, do I think yeah. – we should have better storylines, better characters, and very like you know, you know, you should you always you always have room for improvement. But uh, I yeah. do I do agree that like that the, the I think the one if, if if someone came up to me today and said I miss TNA, like if I want to go back, what's the main thing I should look out for? The first thing I would say is their knockouts division. And if someone asked me why, right. I would say exactly what you just said, man. It's it's accurate. It's it's consistent. Uh, they have a good roster. I wish they would take themselves more seriously. Because if they looked at themselves at more at a more serious uh, division, it would be a really comp- it would be really competitive. The fact that I want to yeah. see Ty Valkyrie versus ha- like the, 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 the amount of combinations are unreal. Um, they are truly like like Valkyrie, uh, Hogan, uh, Havoc, um, Diana De- Perrazzo, Jordan Grace. That alone is already is better than to me better than most of the women's divisions. Easily better than AEW's by a long shot. But a uh, long long shot. By yeah. a long shot. And um, and even on Raw, like uh, they're struggling with the women's division as well. So you know, I think Impact has a lot to prove. Uh, doesn't have a lot to prove in the Knockouts division. Uh, I, I I'm happy. To, I'm happy with their with the place right now. 
So to close it uh, off, Brody, to close it off, uh, I just, I just want to, um, before you come back next time, what do you hope Impact does in the next shit, in the next month? Like, what, 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 where, where, where are you hoping they go, in, 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 what direction they go into, uh, whether, story, whether it's storylines or character development? Like, what's your vision for Impact in the future? My vision for Impact in the future is to have some stability when it comes to where they want to go because I think you see as well as I see that they're kind of going fly by night. If you can find this person, we're just going to stay, change the storyline to fit this person. And that's not going to keep you know, the stability that they need. Yeah, they've definitely done some things to improve the product, and yeah, they have been consistent. But you're going to lose the interest of people when you decide you just want to keep changing titles because you get these new people around, especially being, like you said, with the um um you know the, the the leftovers because they are the people that got fired they're going to always kind of be like an asterisk behind the names yeah. uh, it must but even though that's how wrestling is but that's just the way it goes so stability is my my opinion i, I storylines when it comes to that um placement know who deserves the storylines who don't and and try to take, like you say, in the tag team divisions, I think the tag team division needs to take themselves more serious. Uh, that's why I think the series needs to, um, you know, go up. So be more consistent with the tag team division in your seriousness and be more consistent. I don't want to see another title change in any division for a while. I agree 100%. Uh, you know, uh, um, new new champions across the board, basically, and uh, I want to see them last a, a while. It's, it's all about story development, making that making me know why you're champion, and proving right. why and proving that you matter. And you right. being a champion for three weeks ain't showing me shit. So I appreciate that as well. Impact Brody, yep. thank you again for returning back to the show. We missed you, bro. Yes, I missed y'all too, man. I ain't gonna do that. Do y'all like that again? It just. My, Don't ever treat me, me like that again, bitch. Even, even even if you you want to expand and do your own thing and have the horizon spread to say, you know what, we can do something different. Always check in and show us love here in Turbo Tablet, bro. We miss you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. I miss you guys too, my dude. And until the next time, let everybody listen, know. Back, roll, listen, man, roll, roll, roll me some, roll me a good one for me. All right, we'll smoke it later, boy. <laughs> Please believe, boy. And let, believe it. Let, everybody know, <laughs> let everybody know where they get you at and what other group pages that we can get you at, man. That's right. That's right. You know, we are we are No Cell Nation, um, we are, but the umbrella is No Cell Nation. Where we have AEW Nation, NWA Nation, and Impact uh, Wrestling Nation all on Facebook. And on t- uh, Twitter, we have Impact Wrestling Nation and uh, AEW Nation. Um, our handle on Twitter for AEW Nation is AEW Nation, of course. And impact is uh, I wrestling I wrestling nation. So uh, check us out, get at us. Um, and I'm thinking about just doing the whole podcast thing myself, but of course I want to um, get the Tom Burkle tabloid guys on that because it's just that fucking great. Of so keep course, it real. talk to us about it. We can. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Turnbuckle Tabloid.